Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. Halloween ends in men. <laughs> Basic instinct shape of things. Oh, God. Doctor Strange 365. <laughs> This podcast has to die. Oh, God. I'm Nathan Simmons. <laughs> yes, I like animals. Uh, and there's more complexity in my tomato soup than in both of your brains combined. That's fair. <laughs> and this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining and some of cinema's bleakest endings. Bleakest. Uh, Nathan, bravo, first of all. Bravo. That was incredible. Oh, thanks, man. It's not often I get to bust out my Billie Eilish impression. <laughs> My face is hot. You and DC should start a band. Yeah, oh, we, we should. should. We really should. Only Billie Eilish covers. <laughs> Ew. So no time to die. Yeah. I guess we're here, fellas. Yeah. I finally got to watch it. Oh, Yay. that's true. That's true. This is the first time for you? Yeah. yeah. Like, literally, the movie finished 10 minutes ago. Uh -huh. Oh. Wow. So, fresh, fresh. Let's jump into first impressions. Go ahead. Woo! Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I mean, I, 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 I have notes. Oh boy, oh, for sure. oh boy. <laughs> but, but overall, I did enjoy it. Yeah, a lot more than I thought I would. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. right, right off the bat, the movie has a lot of like story threads with Spectre. Uh huh. So that was a concern yep. immediately. Yep. Yep. And yep. then they just wipe that movie off the face of the fucking planet. Yeah. <laughs> they just go for it. They spend the first half of this movie cleaning uh, up after the last movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and, and somehow with grace, like it's done pretty elegantly. Mostly, yeah, yeah I think so. First half of this movie's fucking ten out of goddamn motherfucking ten. Yeah, <laughs> this is uh, uh -huh. yeah. It, this movie is saddled with a lot of baggage and somehow manages to stick the landing. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they do it, and there are definitely like so many of my notes are story problems, and I'm still just like, you know what? Fuck it. It's James Bond. This rules. Yeah. No, this <laughs> it feels like this this script in this movie was it started off as like popsicle sticks and Elmer's glue <laughs> and they ended up with like a pretty decent log cabin yeah. like I don't know how they did it that's a real I love that metaphor thank you it's, and it's also it falls apart like a house of cards much like the script does uh -huh. um, somehow this movie works but it should not right. because there's so much stuff that does not make sense in this movie uh -huh. <laughs> it successfully does what Rise of Skywalker tried to do oh yeah. interesting okay yeah yeah I just feel like the, like there's so much of this movie that feels I mean, one, one of my big gripes with this run of Bond movies is that Bond doesn't need to be serialized. Mm -hmm. We don't have to MCU this. We don't have to have everything be connected. And uh, so, like when this movie starts, I I remember like telling the person I was with, hey, uh, yeah, Mr. White was this character. Right. Like it was like you don't expect to have to go into a Bond movie remembering a guy who died six years ago and was connected to the first mission. Sure. And it's uh, it's a lot of baggage. I, I I will play devil's advocate because uh -huh. I actually like this. I like the Craig era more than any other era because it's serialized, because I get to watch a, a James Bond that starts off as a rookie 007 sure. and then ends up where he ends up. I like and, and then it is too old for the job one movie later. Yeah, halfway through <laughs> yeah. the, the course of his, his era. Yeah, I'm too old for this shit. Um, no, it, it, that's the unfortunate part is that there was clearly no planning right. uh, ahead of time. Well, I mean, one of the movies was literally shot during the writer's strike. Right. So that's part of it. And somehow is not the worst movie. Right, I don't exactly. Know they... <laughs> and then also halfway through, they suddenly get rights to characters they couldn't use before. Mm -hmm. So they have to retrofit that that into the first two movies. Yeah. I, I don't hate the idea of serialization. The problem is Spectre throws all that shit at the audience like, oh, by the way, Quantum is actually Spectre. Mm -hmm. This guy's actually this guy. Mm -hmm. Here's your evil brother. Mm -hmm. oh, God <laughs> damn they it. They full on go gold member with it. They do. They yep. go gold member with it and simultaneously kind of pull a uh, John Harrison Khan reveal. Mm -hmm. That means nothing to the audience if they don't know classic Bond movies. Literally the only one in the audience that gasped when he said it. And everyone else was like, what? Oh, sure. <laughs> I mean, it It was not surprising, uh -huh. but it was just like, oh, they actually did it. Okay. Spectre commits the cardinal sin of also just kind of wasting Christoph Waltz. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, it's almost impressive how <laughs> yeah. badly yeah. they waste him in that movie. I wrote down one of my notes was like, 
I I think this movie and Spectre together proved that Christoph Waltz is maybe not as good as we give him credit for, or maybe it's you just- You shut the fuck up! Or, or he was underserved there you by go. these. Or it's one of the two, and honestly, I haven't seen enough of his work to really know for sure at this point. Because here's the thing, I clown on Spectre a lot, but the number of times per month that I say, it's me, James. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe makes it worth it. Yeah. The author of all your pain. <laughs> well, Spectre mainly pissed me off because it completely spoiled my entire like long game mm. with Nathan. Mm. Oh, because you're my half brother? Well, <laughs> fucking. And that explains that mysterious ski accident. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Right. <laughs> so fuck that movie is all I'm saying. Uh-huh. I had a plan uh-huh. and that movie fucking ruined all of it. I'm sorry, man. Now I got to come up with something new. <laughs> Years of planning down the drain. Let's uh, let's roll things back just a little bit here because this may be someone's first time tuning into the show. Mm. Whoa. Uh, and if that's... Buddy. <laughs> if that's you that fits that criteria, welcome to the Silver Linings Playlist. As I mentioned, we are a podcast that watches movies such as No Time to Die mm-hmm. that don't necessarily end on everything being hunky dory. <laughs> this movie, spoiler alert, going forward from this point on, uh, James Bond fucking dies at the end of this movie. <laughs> he sure does. He die. They. He's dead as shit at the end of this movie. He dies hard. Yeah, <laughs> I would does. actually say. Yeah, one hundred percent. No time to die hard. That would be this guy. <gasps> oh, yeah, good. I want to watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to come up with a silver lining at the end here. Oh, I got one locked and loaded. All baby. right, all right. So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about. Uh, we can jump right to. Oh, really? You want to just skip this episode? I got things to do. (laughs) I know you're on a lot of coffee and Red Bull, but... We're going to talk about the movie. We're going to talk about uh, where we think the future of uh, James Bond goes from here. We're mm-hmm. going to cover all that stuff. But before we do, Nathan, this was your pick. Yeah. And I believe, if I'm doing the math right, the last pick of yours specifically for the season. Why Why No Time to Die? Well, I love this movie, mm-hmm. first of all. I'm going to just reveal my hand here. Okay. But, uh, you know, it, it felt right to kind of bookend this season and last season because my first pick last year was Casino Royale. Mm-hmm. And I've just, I don't know, between that and doing a another Bond podcast, like, I kind of wanted to give myself a little bit of space here. Sure, sure. And uh, I I had enough time to kind of come back and really appreciate this movie. Mm-hmm. But even more than that, like, this movie has a really special place in my heart because this was the first movie I saw after, you know, lockdowns and everything. Like, course. basically, not going to the theater for a year and a half mm-hmm. and all of the movies that kept getting, this movie in particular, kept getting pushed over and over and yep. over again. Yep. Oh my God, it took so long for this movie to come out. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was such an emotional experience to not only get back into a movie theater, but the second the MGM logo came up, I hear the Bond theme, I start choking up. Mm-hmm. And I kind of don't stop doing that for the entirety of that screening. Yeah. Even like the stuff where I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, I was in it. I was so happy to be back at the theater, happy to be back watching a Bond movie. And uh, I don't know, I when I thought about something that just gives me every feeling at the same time and something that I would love to talk to you guys about specifically. The, this movie just felt like the right capper to the season for my picks. All right. No, I, I completely agree. I, I don't think this was necessarily the first movie I saw back in theaters, but it was definitely one of the first few. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I... I, my initial reaction coming out of the theater was that was a really good Bond movie. Mm-hmm. Some parts don't hang together well. Mm-hmm. I put it right dead center, yeah. you know, in my rankings of the Craig era. Same here, yeah. But on this rewatch, I think it's moved up one. Really? And I'm going to say something hot take. I think it's better than Skyfall. Interesting. Wow. I, I kind of put it neck and neck with Skyfall because there's, there's stuff in Skyfall that doesn't quite hold together for me either. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Skyfall just on a purely, like, visual and popcorn level Mm -hmm. I love that movie so much oh no I love Skyfall a lot and on any given day I may feel differently this may go back to to number three but But it's it's so easy for me to put this ahead of Quantum and and Inspector of course of course incredibly easy I will (laughs) say though Spectre for me is dead last same I know people shit on Quantum I think that movie gets unfairly misaligned I agree Quantum works it does you just have to watch it immediately after Casino Royale (laughs) given the, the nature of how that movie was made mm-hmm. i think they pulled it off incredibly well all things considered it's also the shortest bond movie mm-hmm. so it trucks along mm-hmm. it it really you know what if you look at quantum of solace as like premium dlc mm-hmm. for <laughs> casino royale mm-hmm. not bad holy shit that's a great way to do <laughs> yeah i think craig's worst bond is still better than a lot of other bond movies like mm-hmm. it's 
And that's how impressive that movie is to me. But Mally, what about you? This is your first time watching it. And you, you said you came in with positive. Is there anything immediately that you want to like that struck you or anything that was surprising to you right away? Like, um, did you have it spoiled for you? I guess is my big question. I did know that he died at the end. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. This motherfucker has retired and come back more than Michael Jordan. Yeah. 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 He's gone rogue in each of Craig's movies. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like it's like in the Mission Impossible movies where it's like, oh, he's gone rogue. He does it every movie. Uh, no, yeah, wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Ethan doesn't work for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, I will I will counter that with this movie. He doesn't go rogue because he's not a double O agent. He retired. Movie. True, yes. true. He goes rogue or quits. There, yes. you, go. there you go. Yes, because he also quit in his first movie. That's yes. true. <laughs> that's true. Mally, did you know he had a daughter? No, okay. and that's one of my biggest nitpicks with the movie. Oh, is, is not that he has a daughter okay. that they try to do the whole oh well she's not your yes she is yeah, yeah she is yeah. you know it from the first moment like yeah yeah see i love that they that ballad tries that shit yeah. and then uh, it's immediately apparent that she's just saying that to try and shield them yes. like the next scene is him and her with their, at breakfast you're like oh that's his daughter yeah <laughs> it wouldn't bother me that much if like they didn't kind of play it up at the end where it's like she has your eyes mm-hmm. i know it's like motherfucker we've known the whole time like this is i n- love that i love that I moment like- we gotta retire that line oh there's a number of lines in this movie that needs to be retired yeah. um but here's the thing even the even the cliches i think are well acted for the most part uh-huh. like I, not all of them sure. yeah there, there is a lead actor in this movie that i am going to eviscerate in this episode uh, I, <laughs> oh my god i hope we're talking about the same person because there's I have a uh, feeling i yeah there's a character i cannot stand in this movie so I'm sure we'll probably have cross pollination there, but let's let's talk about this. This movie, uh, as we mentioned before, was pushed back to hell. Mm-hmm. The production was a nightmare. It seemed like to the point where there were when Craig hosted Saturday Night Live on the weekend that the movie was originally supposed to open. He did sketches talking about how it had been postponed. Yeah, like they had time to do that. Yeah. So we'll we'll talk about some of that stuff, but let's talk about the creation and the release of No Time to Die. So it was shot in like 2016. I don't know <laughs> when the fuck. So uh, my official release year is 2021. Mm-hmm. Director is Kerry Fukunaga, uh, who I love. Problematic fella. A little yeah, bit. Yeah, agreed. I, I, I like his work. I will say that. No, uh, yeah, that's what I figured you meant. <laughs> uh, the movie stars Daniel Craig, Leia Sadu, Lashana Lynch, Ray Fiennes, Christoph Waltz, Ben Wishaw, Naomi Harris. Feels like a fucking Harry Potter movie with all these British people. <laughs> Rami <laughs> Malek, <laughs> Rory <laughs> Kinnear. <laughs> uh, who did I leave out? Jeffrey? right on a darmus mm-hmm. billy magnuson rory kinnear plays like eight characters in this movie actually. he sure does God. I, I, there's a couple of times i wrote down ah rory kinnear <laughs> tanner jump scare oh yeah no it was real weird watching him in this movie after <laughs> having after just men. watched men yeah. oh. especially when you realize like his regular speaking voice is the priest character uh-huh. yeah yeah <laughs> what if tanner was secretly the villain behind all of this and he just started having multiple bursts like he birthed all the villains in the past movies <laughs> 12 out of 10 movie. <laughs> Javier Bardem <laughs> crawls out of him. He, Javier Bardem would be the first one to come out of him, right? Yeah, he, he would. Yeah. Hello. Oh, I don't know. Dominic Green. Mm. <laughs> Elvis. Elvis, of course. The budget was $250 million. Oof. Buddy, it is on the screen, yeah. too. Oh, it is. This movie is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Same uh, DP as Babylon mm. and a bunch of other really good movies. Yes, yes. Uh, she's basically Damon Chazelle's fucking person. Yeah, La La Land too, right? La La, La Land, First Man and I want to say don't look up. Wow. Okay. So some hitters. All right. Uh, the movie managed to grow $774 million worldwide. Yes, sir. That's a lot. Currently has an 83% on Rotten Tomatoes and was the winner of Best Original Song at the Oscars for Billie Eilish's song. Also nominated for Best Achievement in Visual Effects and Best Sound. Mm-hmm. Now, Nathan, I know you said off air you got you want to talk a lot about music and Bond themes. <laughs> this one, I know you hate you hate this song, right? I hated it at first. Oh, okay. In the theater, I as soon as it started, I got up and went to the bathroom. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> damn, because I had heard it before. Yeah, and, and it was forty minutes before the title card. I know, right? <laughs> I was like, damn, we're already we're only at Act One. All right, I gotta go pee. <laughs> no, I, I hated the Sam Smith one I because I'm like that song is terrible. I don't think you could do falsetto in a fucking Bond theme. Yeah. and then on this rewatch. I listened to this Billie Eilish one and watched the opening credits for the first time. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? This one works for me. It goes with that title sequence pretty well. Yeah. 
I think this works better because this is the swan song of the Craig era. Yeah. And say what you will about that Jack White and Alicia Keys one. It's better than the Sandsmith one. Yeah. It's fun. It yeah. just, it, there's only one verse. Yeah. And then like the second half of it is just. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that, I, don't, I don't like that. I don't like that so much. I mean, that's, that's every Jack White song. That's yeah. true. <laughs> but no, this, this song is much better on, on this, the second Look time. Out, man. <laughs> Look out, man. But uh, I still would not rank it in my like top 10 of all James Bond themes for sure. No. Well, I, yeah. I mean, the, the thing is the Craig era has two like undeniable bangers, right? Mm-hmm, like, you know, mm-hmm. my name is a really excellent reintroduction to the series. Oh, mm-hmm. hell yeah. And then Skyfall is probably the best Bond theme or at least top three. <sighs> I, think it's, I think it's my favorite. It's, it's so good. Live and Let Die is really good too, though. I love mm-hmm. Live and Let Die. And also the score is gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, Hans Zimmer doing incredible work with fucking Johnny Marr from the Smiths, yeah. you know, adding guitar work to it. So like all of that, uh, it's, it, I, I love the sound of this movie. The feel of it is like mournful, but also really hopeful towards the end when you, you know, you wouldn't expect it to be. Dude, and the emotional bits of the score yeah. really get me. Yeah. It's really good. The, the Matera, uh, piece of music that like the, the, the bits that interpolate the, uh, we have all the time in the world. Oh my God. Are incredible. Oh my God. Oh. When the strings come in, I am, it melts me immediately. Uh huh. I mean, I think I've said on this, this before, my two favorite Bond movies of all time are Casino Royale and, uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service. So like this movie hits me on an emotional level, just music wise. Of course. And the way that Zimmer puts the, the, you know, the motif of the, the, of the theme song throughout the movie is just, it's always done in such a tasteful, perfect timing. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, this, this score is Hans Zimmer being an odd choice too for a Bond movie but totally it works yeah somehow it works he doesn't do his usual shtick which i appreciate yeah it it would have been so easy for safin to be all like dissonant chords and shit but like he actually does some fun like uh evil genius music he sure does oh god damn it rami malik's so good he's great oh no oh okay we got some discourse already oh no (laughs) before we get into it uh, i want to bring back a bit for this movie when it's appropriate i like to bring this one out of the out of the chest here Mm -hmm. i think it's not (laughs) when it's appropriate when you think we'll let you get away with it yeah Yeah, it's true when you thirsty i was a little bit thirsty during this movie so Mm -hmm. i'm bringing back drink of the film and of course we know if, if there's any franchise that has classy beverages in it mm-hmm. um, to really accompany the, the feel of the movie. <sighs> My God, you're thirsty at this moment. <laughs> you know, James Bond likes his drinks, uh, his martini shaken on steroids. So I thought, what's a drink that Bond would probably like uh-huh. that really just oozes elegance and class and sophistication? So you're drinking a steel reserve. <laughs> uh, no, no, not necessarily. <laughs> I, I'm okay. going to go with uh, actually a sponsor of today's episode, Screwball <laughs> Peanut Butter Whiskey, because what? when you're really <laughs> thirsty for a whiskey, fellas, you, you reach for a peanut butter, <laughs> just enhanced whiskey from Screwball. It's to the Misfits, the Black sheep uh, and the screwballs what, what is it's this? 70 proof it's 35 percent alcohol and it goes down smooth wait real smooth this is not a real ad and i could not think of a drink that i you know i think james bond of all people would appreciate a real nice um, smooth crisp are you doing this whiskey with the refreshing taste of peanut butter are you doing this in memory of george p wilbur who chugged <laughs> peanut butter in halloween six uh so thank you screwball for sponsoring this episode i really um, appreciate it and uh fellas i'm gonna i have one of their tiny little bottles here okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to enjoy it right now on the episode, so we can start talking about this movie. But again, that screwball <laughs> peanut butter whiskey, Dustin, so you can find it at any of your liquor stores or um, local retailers of alcohol. We have to talk about a two-hour and 44-minute movie, <laughs> and you're doing a skit. <laughs> completely, un, um, completely unrelated segue, the product placement in this movie, man, is fucking just not subtle at all. Because <laughs> uh-huh. remember, all evil villains drive Range Rovers. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's also very outdated product placement. Mm. That's good this peanut movie butter whiskey. To, God damn it. <laughs> Use it to clean off your bionic eye. Of course. So I, I want to start at the beginning. There was something so comforting this time. We're going to talk about that I, later. <laughs> just about these soft horns with the MGM logo yeah. coming up. Yeah. It really got me in the mood right away. I love that there's no blood wipe I know. on the gun barrel sequence, too. Yeah. Is that a first? Uh, is that a first in the first? I think so. Possibly. As far as I know. Hmm. I mean, they skipped the gun barrel for a couple of the Craig movies. That's yeah. true. This one, this one's like, it's something new, something different. I don't know. I always feel like the outcast when we do a Bond movie because I'm the only one 
someone that doesn't like worship them on this podcast. Sure. That's oh, totally I don't, fair. I don't, I don't worship them, but I, I really appreciate just the longevity of this franchise and how many times it's rebooted itself. I'm wearing a rosary with Timothy Dalton's photo on it. So, oh, okay. I have a Terry cloth <laughs> uh, robe on, you know, that's just above the knees. So. You're not, I mean, I know you're joking, but I have two of those onesies. I know you do. Like the gold. <laughs> I know you do. That's why I said <laughs> like it. The gold finger onesies. Of course. Of course. I learn new things about you guys every episode. <laughs> I, I love this cold open and I'm talking about just this flashback here. Yeah, I was about to say there's two of them, yeah. which kind of adds to how bloated this movie is right away. But I love it. It's so good. But I I love it. I know. Because this cold <laughs> open feels like a Michael Myers movie, yes, dude. Like that's exactly what I wrote down. Uh huh. There's a jump scare. Yeah. There is and and Safin when when he gets shot by young Matil or a young Madeline here. The way he takes the bullets and falls off the balcony is falls backwards. Is Michael Myers? Yeah. Like oh, it yeah. is. He is the shape in that moment. Wait, he do, he literally does the sit up. Yes, mm-hmm. he does. And it's amazing. Mm-hmm. This no mask is so scary because it, it it looks almost expressionless, but like when you see it at different angles, it's almost like it's smirking or it's frowning. It's really interesting the way that they like they light this thing. It's really good. It's so good. Also, I got I got I got I got two things with this whole sequence. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. One, I don't care what the director says. It, it, he's a new version of Dr. No. Yes. I don't care what the director says. Yeah. Mixed with Blofeld because this this movie, 40% of it is a re, uh, is a sequel to Spectre, right? Yep. Yeah. And then the other 60% is a remake of Dr. No, You Only Live Twice and Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Yeah. Uh, yep. He literally has Blofeld's plan from from the novel yeah. of uh, You Only Live Twice. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. They took the Poison Garden mm-hmm. and they took all the kind of motifs from the old movies, but it, it still works. And He's straight up dressed like Doctor No in, yeah. the, in the finale. Yeah. Also, how old is Rami Malek's character yes. supposed to be at the beginning? Because great like, question. great question. <laughs> um, that's there's some Texas Chainsaw timeline shit going on <laughs> yes. here. Mm-hmm. Rami Malek is only four years older than Leia Sadu, right. and by all accounts, he should be I don't know twenty years older than her. yes. <laughs> like I don't understand it either. They 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 get away with some stuff here. He should They're be like, like we put some if we put some Edward James almost craggy face on him, and uh-huh. then we get away with it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like when they did Pedro Pascal in The Last of Us. They just put some salt and pepper in his beard. Like yeah, he's twenty years older now. <laughs> That works for me. Yeah. I'm literally just like, I believe this man is 56 years old. No, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it worked in that. Yeah, uh-huh. I don't, I don't care. I just accept it. But mm-hmm. he should be like a teenager here, like if anything. Pedro Pascal exists on a spectrum. He's always going to be daddy, no matter how old you are. True, I true. Don't like that. <laughs> um, like run my boy Rami like a gray street. Like, give Ooh. him that clo- like give him the Clooney on the sides or something. Uh-huh. Oh, some gray sideburns or something. Basically, give him some sex appeal. Is what I'm saying. Uh, I think he's got plenty of sex appeal but I, I hear you i hear you ah, no, no, that little Clooney salt and pepper Woo! yeah that'll get you there i just feel like rami malik is like the go-to if you're like we want a weird little guy yeah, yeah. he's a, he's a new steve buscemi i like it <laughs> let, let him be the weird little guy but he's i just feel like he's doing almost nothing in this movie uh, okay okay so let's talk about him now because i knew this would be a point of contention uh-huh. i think his performance is great i think the script doesn't do him any services yeah that's where i'm at like he is you could almost cut him out of the movie entirely and it would be totally fine i have no idea what he wants yeah that's the that's my one of my biggest issues with this movie is from scene to scene i'm not sure what he wants so that's where i i'm going with like i the script doesn't do any services because right. his whole plan is get rid of Spectre and he does that in like the first 40 minutes of the movie. Yeah. And then he's like, now also let's kill off half the world or whatever. Right. But I, I just feel like he's also playing... <laughs> quiet freddie mercury like mm-hmm. he's got the weird he's got his like teeth poking out right and then he's just he's just sort of whispering through this movie i well, don't see, know that's my biggest issue with bohemian rhapsody as a movie is that it ruined rami malik for people oh, really yeah yeah i mean did you have you watched mr robot yeah no he's great in mr robot Dude, he's so fucking good in that yeah but people only know him now as freddie i think he's good in this uh-huh. but because bohemian rhapsody is so bad <laughs> mm-hmm. it's tainted his other performances yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, so here's the thing. I think Rami Malek is such a good throwback to like classic Bond villains of yeah. like, give this guy a weird deformity, you know, make him like bigger than life. Yes. Like this guy. And give him nothing to do until the third act. Exactly. <laughs> but that's, a, that's I, I, I think if this movie wasn't so focused on cleaning up Spectre, yeah. it would give him something to do. And maybe that's what it is. Is like uh, by the time I get to Poison Island, I really want that like 
confrontation. Yeah. And like, I, I, and again, the Dr. No comparisons are inescapable, but if you compare this performance to Joseph Wiseman, who I genuinely believe is a psychopath in that movie, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> I think Malik's best scene in this is the, uh, the office visit in the middle of the movie. Yeah. I think he's great there. It's the finale where he just really falls flat for me. Yeah. And part of that might just be because I, again, I don't know why he's making these decisions. Yeah. Well, so here's the thing. It takes after this cold open, it takes him an hour to show back into the fucking movie. That's a problem. Sure. A huge problem. And then the villain of the movie and the hero don't meet until over two hours into the movie. Right. That doesn't bother me quite as much because oh. I, like, in, in, well, just because in, in Bond tradition, for me, I just feel like he's going to be dealing with like the Aaron boys until the third act anyway. Yeah, I don't know, man. I but just, I get what you're saying. If this is the guy who has to kill James Bond, he should be more intricately tied to him. Well, see, that's, I, I kind of disagree. I yeah. kind of like that. Like, it's kind of diabolical that like Safin has no personal vendetta against Bond whatsoever, which sure. is kind of a first in this franchise. That's true. Well, at least with the Craig era, like he doesn't care about Bond at all mm-hmm. until Bond gets in his way. And then what he does at the end of the movie is so fucking diabolical. Yeah. Like it's so fucking evil. It's mm-hmm. the. He is the, the the biggest villain of the whole, like, move over, Blofeld. This dude is way more fucked up than you are. Spoiling it right now, but the the moment when Bond just shoots him dead Oof. and empties his gun into him oh. is m- maybe Hard. one of the best moments in the movie. Yes. In, in Craig's whole era is it's, it because you, you're right, this guy has crossed the line. He's ruined everything. Yeah. So, I'm done. You're dead. <laughs> it, it, it's such, like, the way he doesn't even look at him. Yes. Bond kills uh, the villain. Yes. Like, he actually, he kills two villains. We were really jumping ahead I know, here. I know, I Remember know. to like and subscribe. <laughs> anyway, back to the opening sequence. Alright, so yeah, I guess we are too far ahead. Let's jump back to the beginning. Yes. So, the opening sequence would be a lot more tense if we didn't know that was Madeline immediately. I know. In my opinion. Like, it kind of takes all the tension out for me. Okay, I, here's my big question with this movie. Nathan, maybe you can help me. Okay. If it's about the fucking third act, I swear to God, DC. <laughs> no, 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 no. But this whole movie, they're talking about Madeline's secret. Uh-huh. Madeline's secret. James, when you find out what her secret is, it's going to undo everything. Her, what is, okay, twofold. Yeah. Is her secret not that she was a daughter of Spectre? Which Bond knows. That's, okay, thank you, thank you. No, so you're, you're absolutely right it doesn't really play it doesn't really work the only the only way that that works is if everybody knows that Safin saved her life and would someday come back for her okay which also further it's just very confusing that this guy is just like all right i have saved this girl i'm now going to wait 25 years right (laughs) or whatever and come back for her this is what i mean by the script not doing him any services Uh because there's there's so much wrong with this. If this opening scene, they want to keep this cold open, mm-hmm. don't have him save Madeline. Just cut it right there with him watching her under the ice. Right. And then leave it there. Right. But yeah, I thought I hallucinated. I'm like, <laughs> I did Mr. White not tell James Bond that was his daughter in the last movie? No, that's that's why James went to the Alps to get her. Right. Yeah. So I was like, what the fuck is this other, what other secret could she have? Well, and I, I, I have a feeling that there were a lot of things tweaked, like as the movie sat on the shelf for a year and a half or whatever. Sure. I, I still can't believe wait was the secret supposed to be the daughter oh, oh maybe that well w- was it was the secret supposed to be that he had a daughter that's what i thought it was well fuck this whole time to- because they keep talking about they keep saying in hushed tones essentially that oh she's a daughter, daughter of specter specter. she's a part of yeah and now you make that makes a lot more sense i guess i feel stupid now <laughs> well in in your defense I just watched the movie. Wait, 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 wait. No, it can't. It can't make sense because they talk about that during the o- the cold open when they're in Italy and right. she hasn't had the baby then. Yeah. Fuck. Well, she does say, I have something I have to tell you. And I think that's when she was oh, going to say I'm pregnant. pregnant. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, here's the thing. In this opening, they... Uh, How the fuck does Spectre know she's pregnant? Right. Well, there's that. <laughs> is, she, but, is she taking pictures of her pregnancy test and posting about Instagram? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they have better chemistry in this movie than they did in Spectre. Oh, yeah. yeah. Spectre never once convinced me of this love story. And in this movie, I buy them as like an endgame couple 
people immediately. Yeah. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just they've got a better script to work with yeah. or or what. But like there are a couple of moments in this movie when Daniel Craig looks at her and I'm thinking this man will die for her. Like yeah. even before I knew what was going to happen at the end of this movie. I mean, I think the problem with the ending of Spectre is that they just walk off into the sunset together. Right. I feel like it should be more. It, should, it shouldn't be so like and now they're together. Well, right. This, it should be this opening scene was the original scripted ending for Spectre. Oh. Um, it was supposed to end with them driving off together and she tells him, you know, can we go a little faster? And he says, we have all the time in the world and then credits roll. Uh, no, that wouldn't have worked for me. No? No. Oh, see, I, I I don't know. I go back and forth on it. I think it works perfectly in this movie. Yes. I think it works perfectly in this movie. It's great in this movie. Um, also, the original <laughs> uh, Kerry, Fukunaga, bleh, Kerry Fukunaga had yep. an idea to reveal two thirds of the way through this movie that it was all in James's head and he was still being tortured by Blofeld Inspector with the oh, needle in his head. give me a fucking break. No. Yes. No. Can you fucking imagine? I would have been lit. <laughs> Especially when I haven't waited as long as I did for this movie. I yeah. would have been I would have walked out. Yeah. I don't walk out of movies ever, but I would have walked the fuck out. No, I would. that would have made me furious. Yeah. I would have gotten closer to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I love this shot of Safin behind the frosted glass yes. mm-hmm. when uh, little Madeline sees him. That's a great fucking shot. Yeah. This opening is terrifying. Yeah. It also, if you are planning on saving <laughs> uh, saving this little girl trapped in their eyes, <laughs> maybe don't shoot the bullets directly at her. Oh, sure. Like, yeah. what the fuck? What is this? Uh-huh. <laughs> what is this? Like, uh, also, why doesn't he just kill her right here? Uh, because he feels bad for her? Because he wants to do to her what they did to him. Yeah. It is what I'm bullshitting. <laughs> he, s- he saw her eyes and he's like, you needed me and now I own you. And I'm like, well, what? what? Yeah. You owned this child whose parents were missing? Like, Bro, owning a child, that's a bad look. Yeah. Come on, Rami. It's not great. Uh, and he's on an island too. Rami Malik might be standing in for somebody. Uh, <laughs> oof. <laughs> So Lucifer, <laughs> I can't fucking hate that name. It's bad. I, I love his name. I don't care. I love it. It's so old school. I love it. I love it. Fair enough. And I, his his outfits in this movie, man, when he's on the island and mm-hmm. he's in his like basically a kimono. I fucking love it. Yeah. I don't care. A kimono with like a Nero collar. As a man who owns three kimonos, one hundred percent on board with his outfit. Thank you. Thank you, Bally. He does look very comfy. Nathan, do you own a kimono? Bro, I don't. I'll send you one. <laughs> Ooh, man, we should all wear kimonos for this episode. We should get kimonos with the uh, the podcast logo on the back. Ooh, now you're talking. <laughs> I wear a kimono during like 50% of these recordings. Y'all just don't see me. Uh, that's great, man. I love that. I stay comfy while we record this podcast. <laughs> I love that for you. So, yeah, we get the all the time in the world. Mm-hmm. That line, I'm like, oh, oh. And then immediately the strings kick in. Uh, and that was, watching this in the theater, I just started crying. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, fuck. I know. I like, I don't know what it is. it's like i'm such an easy mark man you cry a lot <laughs> i do i really I, I sincerely do dude i cried a lot during this rewatch love it priscilla has noticed me crying in this she knows me crying during the last of us she's yep. like why can't you cry any other time yeah <laughs> like, i'm like i don't know this gets me i almost sent y'all a picture of me finishing episode three of the last of us and i was like oh maybe not oh no oh like like kevin smith in the theater yes, with his tears yeah, running like down. kevin smith style <laughs> Red faced. <laughs> the amount of photoshopping I would do with that photo. I know. <laughs> yep. That's why. I mean, if this movie ends right here, pretty good for Bod. Like, yeah, a great short film. <laughs> I love the the little uh, Italian tradition of running your secrets down and burning them. I mm-hmm. think that's great. It's a great motif and a, a great uh, symbol f- symbolism for the movie. Absolutely. Definitely a fire hazard, but you know, it's little <laughs> scraps of paper, I guess. It shouldn't be that bad. This is also where we learned that like in the couple of months since Spectre, James is in way better shape now. Oh, like, yeah. Somehow. Yeah. He takes more punishment than the wet bandits in this <laughs> oh opening God. sequence. Yeah. <laughs> Spending your honeymoon near the cemetery of your ex yeah. has got to be a red flag for Madeline, though, right? It's a small like, country. <laughs> it's also kind of in, inferred that it was sort of her idea because yeah. she wants him to like move on so they can be together and leave his demons behind. It but, definitely like, plays though like, uh, hey, stop following your ex on Instagram or, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> or whatever. But sure. you know, she can see you're watching her stories. <laughs> I love like the through line that is Vesper through all the Craig movies. Yes, yes. I agree. But did you all notice Vesper's age? 23. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's 23. Somehow was a senior agent at MI6. Uh-huh. Sam, like in control of the treasury. And- She's in control <laughs> yeah. of the treasury at 23. Yep. What the, no wonder this shit went tits up. Yep. The 
fuck? Yeah, no. no, I noticed too. She went to a school for peculiar children. Oh, and, there you uh, go. Her power was counting. There you go. What were you guys doing at 23? Uh, uh, not being the treasury of MI6. No, uh, and, uh, <laughs> I was assistant managing a pizza place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little different. Yeah, I worked at, I worked at Hot Topic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I, I thought this was interesting because it does play into the whole thing of Bond thinking that Madeline set him up. Sure. It, it's kind of brilliant. Oh, by the way, did you guys notice what Madeline wrote on her paper? Because I think it was in French. The, the masked man? Isn't that what it is? Yeah, and that's what she wrote down. Yeah. But here's my thing. I'm like, why is that such a big secret that some guy saved her and maybe he'll come for her one day? Is that the secret? After he killed her mom. And yeah, it, it's odd, right? Yeah. It does feel... I mean, it's, it's also sort of the same thing as... Spectre revealing that Blofeld was behind the events of Quantum of Solace right. and everything else. Yeah. But this this just feels like they're making it out to be something much bigger than it actually is. Right. Like, I don't understand why Bond would be like, what? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> why, would, why would he care? <laughs> Again, like, Safin is extremely underserved by this screenplay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got another, uh, you know, you you mentioned that uh, Vesper could have been uh, gone to the school for gifted children. I think uh, Christ. Bond may have also went to that school because he is impervious to explosions. Uh-huh. How the fuck does he survive this? Uh-huh. How? No, a, a grave explodes in it. <laughs> By the way, cold as hell, Blofeld literally blowing up Vesper's body. <laughs> It's kind of, it's kind of so fucking crazy. It's metal as hell. <laughs> and if your plan is to kill Bond here, why just rely on the explosion and then just run away? Why not like keep a couple guys there? Well, I mean, reinforcements show up very fast, yeah. so it does seem like he's like it's fucking immediately. But but the guy that shows him the grave runs away because they show the phone swinging from the from the line. Oh sure, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 rad as hell. It's really ballsy, especially for people who love Casino Royale yep. and that whole story arc and then this chase scene is oh, exquisite intense it's great but there's so many instances where he should be dead or bleeding out you mean like when he pulls a joe dirt and Dude. <laughs> repels off the side of the, <laughs> the rope burn would make him bleed out uh-huh. all over the place oh my god i could not imagine this like i've had one rope burn in my life and mm-hmm. it was the worst thing i've ever felt i could not imagine doing it and then falling how many stories listen i've apologized numerous times for that dc <laughs> i know no, because you, you were pulling on your leash. I don't know why you thought you could get away with it, but that's it hurt. It hurt. <laughs> little piss pig. <laughs> little piss pig. <laughs> Oh, uh, we got to see Infinity Pool. You never put a leash on fuck pig. <laughs> that's, right. Oh, that's right. Fuck pig. I'm sorry. Not piss pig. Fuck pig. Anyway, great uh-huh. gadget stuff in this chase. Yeah. Oh, the gadgets are back. That's great. No, I love getting the DB5 in a chase immediately. Mm-hmm. So good. And then it just getting ripped to shreds throughout this car chase. Oof. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't know. I liked before that, though, when Bond uh, just straight up Grand Theft Auto kicks that guy off the motorcycle. That was great. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. I mean, it's it's great. It's, it doesn't quite meet the levels of uh, that moment when he like grabs the accelerator in Quantum of Solace mm-hmm. and just like yanks the dude off his bike. Oh, man. too Before that, too, before he jumps off the bridge. Bridge, mm-hmm. When the car is coming down one end and the motorcycle is coming down the other, other end, and he shrugs off a bullet whizzing by him. Right? Did you guys see that? He kind of yes. like flinches. Like, Ugh. it's good. God damn, it was good. It almost feels like Craig flinched, and they decided to add that in post. Yeah. But it's so it's really great, yeah. and it also shows you how well armored the the Aston Martin is because they get T boned, and Madeline like barely jostles. She uh-huh. just kind of yelps. <laughs> oh man, too before before that too when he goes back to the hotel. Yeah, and. Oh my god! One of my favorite shots of the movie is when he says, "You're right. Letting go is hard." And oh, it's just yeah, him that, standing there, that slow pull in on his face, covered yeah. in soot. And, oh, yeah, oh, that's so good. But yeah, no, I love the car chase through Italy with the with the little spikes coming out of the the exhaust of the car and blowing yeah. them up. Man, this is how you do gadgets with the, without them being silly. Old school gadgets. Yeah, yeah. it's great. And then, yeah, this this scene here in the middle of the square mm-hmm. may be the best scene of the movie for me. Damn. I don't know. that There is something so good about Bond just giving up. No expression as they're oh. slowly getting through the bulletproof glass. It is gut-wrenching to watch him not care. And she's begging him, Oof. like, we got to go. We got to go. I'll tell you everything. And, and seeing Primo walk right up to her, tr- like, inches away, blasting away through that glass mm-hmm. and almost breaking through. And him not giving a shit. Right. Like, that is... That is Bond at maybe his lowest, yeah. maybe. And I don't know, something about just the look she gives him and him just saying, okay. Yeah. Like, boo. Cold. Mm-hmm. Fucking cold. Followed by one of the coolest stunts. Yeah. Oh, man. The donuts with the Gatling gun and then the smoke. 
It's fucking badass as shit. When we had that shot in the trailer, that is when I I just oh we skipped the trailer, didn't we? Oh my god, you did. Should we roll it back? Should we roll yeah, it back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's right, do it. Let's do it. I, this might be a record. We we took forty minutes or whatever to get into the trailer. But, but no, I yeah. That well, was, we were doing a cold open just like the fucking movie did. That's yeah. true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> da, 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 da. About the same fucking length, honestly. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah. Why would I betray you? <laughs> I watched this trailer a lot oh, before sure. this movie came out. I was so ready. Uh huh. Oh. The world oh, that's a good little transition. Such a cool fucking shot. Yeah. yeah. Where's 007? I like that Mallory's put on a little bit of a, a punch, too. Mm -hmm. Like, he's looking more Bernard Lee as the movies go on. He sure does. Desk job will do that to you. <laughs> it's true. You were double O. Two years. So stay in your lane. You get in my way. I will put a bullet in your knee. Yeah, I don't, I don't really really care for the fake tension they put between these two. I It starts to work for me, and then I feel like they they do her a disservice by yeah. her like walking away from the title. Yeah. I, don't, I, just, I don't like that it's a one-sided fucking argument, because sure. like, he doesn't give a shit about her at all. No, that's true. <laughs> it, it almost makes her pathetic in that first half of the movie. If you feel yourself losing control, I'm not going to lose control. Hello, James. <laughs> <laughs> you gave up everything for her. James, pour me a delicious glass of milk. <laughs> when her secret finds its way out, it'll be the death of him. What is it? You don't know what this is. Yeah, we gotta retire that line too. Oh, and all the all the, most of the dialogue in the trailer is like, you're gonna shit your pants when you find out. Mm -hmm. A studio of violence. No, this is called No Time to Die. That's a Cronenberg movie. <laughs> <laughs> Rami Malek, go back in our back catalog. We did that movie. Yeah. Die with your body. Mine will survive long after I'm gone. Man, it's a good look. I like that big coat. I kind of wish he kept the Phantom of the Opera look for the whole movie. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Well. Yeah. We'll talk about Paloma uh -huh. for sure. Uh huh. I love that the music drops out of that scene too. Yeah. Ugh. Poof. That's yeah. cool as shit. Let's go. <laughs> That's a great shot too. The fake gun barrel sequence. Yeah. Love it. All right, now that we're 40 minutes into the movie. <laughs> there was one cut of the trailer that right when the the tight like the uh, date popped up on the screen, you just heard that last little bring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so satisfying. I like when they do that in this movie after the the song and it yes, cuts to it's, the Yes, uh, it's the best. Yeah. Okay, so are we going to say that now we're post title sequence now that we <laughs> kind of had our own little code open? Yeah, I mean we I love I, I love the title sequence. I don't know that it's necessarily as visually interesting as say like Skyfalls, which is just all, you know, death iconography mm -hmm. or Casino Royales, which is what if a cartoon could punch? Uh, <laughs> but it's it's pretty good or spe even Specters, which is like this weird uh, tentacle hentai. Did not care for Specters sequence. whatsoever. <laughs> Did Guys? not care for it. Guys, oh, uh, no. magnets. Yeah, magnets. Absolutely. How, How do, do they, they work? work? <laughs> I, I also, I do love the, the transition into the title card, which uses those Dr. No-esque dots yep. on the screen. Yep. It's all good. It's all good stuff. But again, he's not Dr. No. No, nope. he's definitely not. Get the fuck out. Man, when I saw that in the theater, I was like, oh shit, we're doing it. Me we're too. fucking doing it. Me too. Yeah. Did you notice all the other motifs from all the other movies in the opening titles as well? Yeah. Like there's the, the hearts from Casino Royale. There's the sand from Quantum. I didn't get all of them, but I I noticed a couple. I, I really dug that, and I freaking love, as silly as it is, the wreath of guns that fire and form a DNA helix. Yeah. That shit rules. Yeah. It's kind of great. <laughs> it's kind of great. Yeah. But Oh, I, I did want to say one last thing, too, before before we get past the opening titles. I was listening to one of my favorite podcasts that talks about movies. Mm. and The Silver Linings Play. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and they're not big Bond fans in particular, but they're like, this, this franchise needs something really to expand it, and they mentioned they wanted more, like, fast and furious in their their james bond Fuck what? Off. and <laughs> well he does get a family that's true that's, yeah 
One thing I will say is I hope whatever they do next with James Bond, mm-hmm. I hope they retain the one thing that separates this franchise from others, and that is the class. Yes. Like, James Bond gets, you know, in this car chasing the opening scene mm-hmm. and they explode everything. He's still got his suit on. He's still covered and bruised and bloodied. But Stiff upper lip. Yes. He's still dressed immaculately. I mean, the best moment, one of the best moments in Skyfall, right, is when he jumps off of the crane, the, the train, like, breaks in half, and then he just fixes his uh, cufflink. Yes, that's that's what I want. I want that to stay in this franchise, no matter yeah. what they do next. I like, agree. Because that's what separates it for me. It's like the wit and like everything just ties together so neatly. And just watching James Bond put Malin on the train mm-hmm. and say, she'll never see me again. And I'm like, oh. Well, the trick about oh. James Bond is he's a thug who cleans up nice. Right. Yeah. You know, right. like, <laughs> that's, and I think Craig really nails that in his tenure. L- like, Ethan Hunt, you know, putting Rebecca Ferguson or whoever on the fucking train Mm -hmm. or Michelle Monaghan, like, I would not buy him being like, oh, you'll never see me again. Uh And then there's like a sophistication to that. Like, I just wouldn't buy it. Right. I hope that stays going forward with whatever they do next. And and to their credit, we don't get him running next to the train. He puts her on the train and he fucking leaves. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's cold as fuck. And she's like running backwards in the train to yeah. try and keep it, her eyes on him. And man, I, it's it's so good. It's so good. You know what's not good to me? Oh, okay. Here we go. David Densick as uh, Dr. Obrachev. Okay. <laughs> here, here we go. This is... Who is a fucking David Cross Mr. Show character. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I, this is the character, right? This is the one that uh-huh. breaks it for me in this movie. This guy's in a different movie uh-huh. entirely. It's, he's doing too much. He's in a Pierce Brosnan movie. There yeah. you go. That's perfect way to put it. Like, I appreciate the attempt at humor. Uh-huh. Don't get me wrong, but like, this guy takes it way too far. Yes. Like when all the Spectre agents are dying, he's oh my like, God. "Yes, I killed all the Spectre." <laughs> That's what I, I was like. This movie does not trust me to be able to follow this plot because oh. it cuts to him and he's like, "Only Spectre are dying. I did it." Yeah. Yeah. Oh, these gloves are so slippery. Oh, my wife. He might as well have said, My wife. God. God damn it. I think the one moment, though, that solidified for me, like, I can't with this character, is the CGI shot of him falling down the elevator shaft, screaming yeah. like a little girl, and then the magnets catching him. <laughs> that one scene, I'm like, This is too goofy, yes. even for this movie. Like, yeah. I can't, I can't do it. I do love the moment, though, when he. Because he's asked, he's tasked with like retrieving this bio weapon for Spectre, mm-hmm. and he pulls it out of the case and holds it up like excitedly, mm-hmm. like he waves it at them. <laughs> It's so silly. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. I love that he's getting bullied at work, though, man. That makes it feel. That makes it so much yeah, better. Bullied by the bank manager from Fleabag. Yes, which, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, I half ex- <laughs> thought he was going to be like, anyway, I uh, put smallpox in your soup, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we cut to Bond, who is officially retired, living in Jamaica, mm-hmm. living at Goldeneye, basically. Yes, and man, just a retired James Bond spear fishing yes. in these shorts yeah. he's got on. Oh my god. God, Mally, I know you had to have noticed these shorts, boy. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's some DC outfit right there. <laughs> oh, you know it. <laughs> Leave it little to the imagination. Oh, my God. Taking jungle showers. Oh, my, the jungle shower is nuts. <laughs> I would love that so much. <laughs> Me too. Oh. No, that's what's peeking out of his shorts. Oh, that's the a, jungle shower. Look at my jungle shower. <laughs> I, I don't know if you get good water pressure from a jungle shower, but you know what? I might sacrifice it. <sighs> One way to find out. I don't know. I, I, I want to know how it works mm-hmm. because it appears to be coming from a waterfall, but he turns turns it off yeah, so yeah i don't know i don't, I don't know. know he's got some kind of macgyver rig going on there to make that work but. and i hope that that he's not just living off the land like that like he's not using banana leaves to wipe or anything like that right <laughs> no no he's got the three seashells you just don't see him there <laughs> <laughs> or he's got a bidet that's also a waterfall somehow it comes up i don't know uh that's that's a geyser there's no time to wipe <laughs> God damn it. Okay, so we get introduced again after fucking two other movies where he's not here. I know. Boom, 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 boom. Felix. Felix. <laughs> oh. My boy, I fucking love Jeffrey Wright as Felix Leiter. Dude, he's so good. Mm-hmm. Bond is allowed one-liners, and I think Felix is allowed one-liners as well. Yes. Felix can get at least one. Yeah. At least. I want a whole movie of just the two of them hanging out. Yeah. Felix gets shot in the stomach and he goes, I have a feeling in my gut he might not be on our side. Uh-huh. It's so good. Uh-huh. It's so good. <laughs> okay. So we get introduced to, to the, the character Logan Ash. Billy Mac 
Magnuson, holy shit, doing the most in this movie. My favorite line in this movie, where'd you get the Book of Mormon? <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> Definitely a Phoebe Waller bridge line. Oh, oh yeah. 100%. I, I remember in the theater seeing this guy and being like, well, he's going to be evil because... <laughs> sure. Because this guy was also a nightmare in The Leftovers. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I, or, I don't know if you guys remember that episode, but like, I was like, oh, this guy is a she... He's got... He's so good at that smile that makes you want to punch him in the throat. He was also a dick in the Power Rangers remake. That's yep, right. <laughs> yeah. But but he's good. I love him. Billy Magnuson and Jonathan Groff, like both oh, graduated from the same school of like creepy, soulless smiles. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's so good. I love it. I I think he, that smile is charming, but also, yeah, you want to punch him in the fucking throat. Like it's. Uh. Didn't you want this to be David Harbor's character though? From from, from Quantum, Quantum of Solace. Solace? <laughs> <laughs> you you will forget David Harbor's in that movie. Holy God, shit, he's so good in that movie though. He yeah. is. I, I like that uh, F- Felix asked him to go talk somewhere quietly, and James is like, all right, we'll go into a nightclub. That makes sense. <laughs> I mean, it kind of does, I guess. Well, and also, like, Logan Ash is me meeting James Bond, where I'm like, this is this is rat. It's Spectre. This is cool. You're the guy. <laughs> You're You're the, you, you hate Spectre. Come on. Let's do this. And he- that would be you, Nathan. That would be like- <laughs> To a fucking T. <laughs> if Logan Ash wasn't a main character, that would be your bit part, uh-huh. for sure. I feel like it is anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I would definitely betray my country. The, uh, uh, the thing that I love about about it is that he also stays on task like James and Felix are like stoked to be broing out together I and know. Logan's like hey here's a photo of this doctor <laughs> we gotta find him. I-, I love the way Jeffrey Wright says Cuba because he's like he's been hiding out in Cuba, Cuba. <laughs> you better move your ass James I don't know I-, I like Felix Leiter so much I like Jeffrey Wright playing Felix Leiter yeah. I feel like the way he plays the character in this movie doesn't fit with the Jeffrey Wright and the Felix Leiter we've known in the last well in the first two movies we saw him in. well so in the first in Casino Royale he has to play really straight laced because he's undercover at the game right. and then I think in Quantum he's a little bit more like fuck all these people James get out of here mm-hmm. but this one yeah he's just he's stoked he's so excited to see he hasn't seen James in five years he like, is carefree he might as well be making it rain like and there's not even strippers in this club like <laughs> oh no it's like the the writers watched Kingsman 2 and they're like, oh, that's what American secret agents are like. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I just think he. I don't know. Somehow he's playing. He's playing this like more relaxed, more happy go lucky Felix. Yeah. But he brings so much class and like reservation to the performance at the same time. Sure. I, Jeffrey Wright just rules. He's the best. No, I love Jeffrey Wright. I love his casual attire. Oh my god, open sh- like open shirt daddies at this club. Like it's ridiculous. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Nathan, you gotta stop saying daddy. <laughs> well, they gotta stop <laughs> casting so many of them. Touche. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> so I know Nomi, who is uh, Lashana Lynch. Uh-huh. I know she is not actually who Bond thinks she is in this scene because he thinks she's just some woman that he met. But like when he brings her back and she's like, is that the bedroom? Like it must be crazy to be James Bond and just constantly have pussy thrown at you. Like <laughs> it's insane. Doing nothing. Yep. He does nothing. And he's she's still like, I'll go into the bedroom. But also it's so strange that she takes him to the bedroom and then then she's like, anyway, I'm a secret agent and like anyways i'll like, fucking put a bullet in your knee it's like yeah. what <laughs> it's really weird how this scene plays out it's she's so naive of like this is my job i'm the new 007 I'm he's 007. like seven i don't give a fuck lady like, yeah i retired <laughs> i quit like the for the third time <laughs> it's so i i love how he does not care at all no it's so good i love that and that he immediately calls mallory yeah. he's just like okay i i know exactly whose fault this is uh-huh. yep and uh, this is why I wrote that. Ah, Rory Kinnear. Because he shows up right here. <laughs> <laughs> Jolly good bone. Oh, my God. Could you imagine if he was doing that in this movie for no reason? Like- <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish so badly. I have a question. Would it be good to keep Jeffrey Wright on for this reboot? And instead of playing Felix Slider, he plays M? Oh, he Sign me great, up. Right? Right? Yeah, yeah. I-, I know we were going to talk about this at the end, but I, I want to talk about it a little bit now. I love this Craig serialized era. Yeah. I think the next Bond, they should get kind of experimental with it. Kind of weird. I want the next one to be a, a period piece like a i want the next one to be, be in good. the 50s a period piece it doesn't have to be serialized you can just have it like you know in the middle of an adventure mm-hmm. i think that would be good mm-hmm. that'd be good and then jeffrey wright playing him like fuck it just just mix it up a little bit i think it'd be great yeah totally okay then we get introduced to i mean unless you guys want to talk about the refines uh introduction here no uh, i mean it's, he's put it's, on weight moving on yeah what were you gonna say nathan oh yeah i mean it, that's that's basically it is like we we get he's crankier than ever <laughs> and uh doesn't trust anybody and we get the idea that uh yeah somehow 
he is uh, he's connected to this Heracles project. Palpatine has returned. So. <laughs> Palpatine's returned. Uh-huh. <laughs> then we get introduced to maybe the best new character of this movie, uh-huh. Paloma. Anadarmus. Man, I love this character, not just because she's playing by Anadarmus, which doesn't hurt at all, right. but this character is so fucking good for this movie. Yes. Like, I love her spirit. I love, she essentially has a deer in the headlights look a lot of the time, but- Dude, her little, like, naive, like, comments and shit yes. are so- so fucking funny. Uh-huh. She and it's but it's it treads a thin line, right? Like this character so easily could have been Rosie from Live and Let Die. Yeah. And instead she is she's this capable agent who is just nervous because it's her first mission. Exactly the word I wrote down. I'm like, I love her because she's not only like goofy and silly, mm-hmm. but she's capable. And she laughs at the very idea that he thinks for a second that she's coming on to him. Yes. I love that moment. And well, by- it is weird to be like, come in this room, now get undressed and take not, your shirt off. Yeah, and not show him the suit. No, it is, but she's just like, wait, Wait, what? No, I'm not. A, no, that's. I just need you to like put your suit on. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I, I kind of hope they bring her back too for uh-huh. the next. Like, I like this character a lot. I think she's great. Phoebe Waller Bridge definitely wrote all of her dialogue as well. Uh-huh. She's getting her own action franchise. It's oh, fun. Oh, I, I, I don't. I don't want that. Really? Like, I, think, I think this character works great as a side character. Uh-huh. Like, I think if you get a full movie of that, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'll watch the movie, but I, I don't think that's a great idea. But you're absolutely right. You get, you've got this bond that's like at the end of the road and you have this young agent who is so happy to be able to help and make a difference. Mm-hmm. And like, she toasts to Felix lighter. Mm-hmm. Like, absolutely. This is the, this is the exact energy that this scene needs. Yeah. But chugging a martini is fucking disgusting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sure. Quick question. So the scientist dude, uh, Borat yep. is what I'm going to call him. <laughs> sure. So he's sitting there and like he, pretends to drop the thing, pulls the other one out of his sock, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. What was his plan if the guy was, like, standing behind him? Boom. <laughs> Great question. Like, the whole- the, does Robbie Malik's whole plan fall apart if he just, like, scooches, <laughs> scooches his chair over? Right. I guess so. I mean, that's- that is, like, one of the hallmarks of the Bond series, right? As you expect- like, all the characters are like, well, I anticipated you would do this, yeah. and then I guessed you would do it that way. Yeah. And, like, it's all- it's all a bunch of coincidences. <laughs> Everyone knows Goon always sit on the other side of the table. <laughs> I mean, Primo is not necessarily the brightest when it comes to being in a room and watching somebody, no. as we'll see later on, too. Well, he only has one eye. I, I guess that's it. I guess that's what it is. <laughs> Luckily, you will be guarded by men with no peripheral vision. <laughs> <laughs> How do we feel about Primo? I think Primo's good. I th- I think it kind of harkens back to Elvis a little bit. Yeah, I, I like Elvis more. Yeah. He makes a little bit more of an impression. Yeah, Primo's, aside from the bionic eye, d- is one of the more underwhelming henchmen, I think. I was perfectly whelmed. Okay. I, uh, I, I, think, I think if you're going to have, I mean, he doesn't do much in the last movie, but uh-huh. if you're going to have Dave Bautista playing a henchman and then you go to this guy, I'm right. like, well, who the fuck is this guy? Like, well, and Dave Bautista is one of the best parts of that movie. That's what I mean. Like, if you're going to have a great, like, even the the small little bit he has in that movie as a henchman like his one one word of dialogue mm-hmm. shit yeah like I, I want another like bigger name henchman then if sure. we're gonna do that yeah. Tom Cruise yeah. <laughs> yeah no wait Ben Stiller as Tom Cruise <laughs> as the henchman there you go I do love this slow realization that people are toasting the plate that has the eye on it yeah. the bionic eye yeah it's, this I, is I love the all the lead up in this sequence alright so here's here this scene I think encapsulates a lot of what I don't like about this movie okay i think the tone is really uneven at times Mm -hmm. where they want to have this grounded real world thing like i i compare this scene with the scene in the square with madeline pleading for james to to save her okay and then you cut to this and it's there's this bionic eyeball on this (laughs) dish tray that this guy's walking around yeah you got borat over here in the corner going yeah so the specter agents are dying yay transmitting uh a speech to everyone's earpieces and it's his birthday come on on, like. See, I don't mind all of that so much as I I dis I I'm frustrated by the fact that Paloma doesn't know who Blofeld is yeah. or that he's in prison. Yeah, she's been sent to investigate a Spectre meeting. That's yeah. true. That is true. That's fair enough. That's info you need. Yes. Oh, I don't know because they are they're everyone is so under the impression like he's in prison. There's nothing he could do. It's been five years since any Spectre activity. Right. Maybe it's not important to know about the head guy that's already in jail. You know. I mean, I feel like it should still come up. Yeah, yeah. I guess you should know the name at least. If you were sent undercover into a gang of neo-Nazis and no one told 
you who Adolf Hitler was. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But no, I this like I said, this is what it, it makes it such an uneven movie for me though, because sure. he's the scientist is a Looney Tunes character in this movie, and he then is. yes, you've got and there's so much happening that's just for exposition. Yeah, yeah. But like Paloma, when she tries to shoot the guy, realizes he's out of bullets, and then beats three guys to death with a with the butt of a gun. Like yes. I love that, yeah. and then. As goofy as it is, I kind of really like him stopping to make a cocktail in the middle of this fight. Oh, I love that. It's great. Yeah. No, that's really fun. I mean, him him throwing the plate at the back of uh, uh, Obrichev's head yeah. oh, and yeah. then finishing the drink that was on it is classic Bond. Yeah. Yes. And I think the party shot really well. I love all the shit with the spotlight. It's so it's goofy, but I, I love it. It's very dramatic. It reminds me of some of the stuff from Skyfall when, you know, Silva's plan is coming together. Yeah. When I I realized this was the same DP as Babylon. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it fucking is uh-huh. like those party scenes. I'm like, yep, she deep. Yep. She shot Babylon. That makes sense. I like the party scene, too, but I think it kind of goes back to what Mally was saying. Like, what if Bond didn't find his way into the middle of this dance floor and then the spotlight hit him? Oh, like- sure. Yeah. <laughs> what was their plan? Yeah. If he ne- if he just if, if the if he told Felix, hey, fuck off, I'm staying in Jamaica. Yeah. What's Blofeld's plan? Yeah, I don't know. So I guess this is where I get a little confused with the plan mm-hmm. because what we come to find out is that this Valdo guy, the scientist, yeah. is working for Safin. Yes. Sure. Who used him to steal a a super weapon mm-hmm. that M was leading the uh development on. Develop yes, thank you, development on. Yeah. He manipulates it to only kill people of Spectre and their families. Yes, because you can you can key it to a specific DNA code mm-hmm. and then he man- so the idea was that it was supposed to be a silent assassin. Yes. You could send it in anywhere and cut back on the agents getting killed in the field. Right. It would only target the person you want to target and nobody else. Right. And now this guy has figured out a way to change it so that it can attack entire genuses. Yes. So like he could kill an entire ethnicity if he wanted to or he could, which, which is- he says later on which is the weirdest fucking line of the movie. Yeah. It's yeah. wild. It comes Weird. out of nowhere. Q sets it up, but then this guy becomes a racist in the last 20 minutes of the movie. For no reason. <laughs> For no reason. Yeah. So so the idea is they were going to use this, like you said, this weapon mm-hmm. and was developing it. It was going to be like, you don't even have to get into a room with the enemy anymore. Yeah. You could just fucking uh, sneeze on him. Which that's one of my favorite, one of my favorite speeches in the movie. Oh, is it's M's, great. Yeah. little monologue about that. It's great. This guy changes it at the behest of Safin yes. to kill off all the Spectre, which is Safin's mission. Yes. He does it. Right. And then he inf- ends up using Madeline to infect Bond to then kill Blofeld so he gets the last of them. Right. And then that should be the end of Sa- He did it. Yeah. Like, say what you will about him, Rami- about Rami Malek, Nathan, mm-hmm. but he is the only Bond villain to actually succeed in everything he set out to do. <laughs> oh, pretty much. And then in the last hour of the movie, he decides, also, I'm going to kill most of humanity, yeah. but it's not really clear why yeah <laughs> just because he has a god complex that's where the script kind of does him no services yeah i th- i think his whole thing was like he's gonna sell the weapon to the highest bidder okay yeah he does yeah he does say there there are people coming to the island which also but i mean this is jumping ahead yeah. but like those boats on the way to the island just don't come into play at all neither does the threat of nuclear war yeah <laughs> he's like our, our potential buyers are arriving soon yes. no 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 they're not no they they're don't not. arrive <laughs> no one's here but also yes he's gonna sell it to somebody but he's also they look at the computer and they see he's keyed it to kill millions of people around the world yeah. so are these two separate plans unclear i think that's like his powerpoint presentation <laughs> yeah like look what i could do yeah i can do anything with this and then the buyers are probably on the way to the island you know have sipping champagne on their yacht mm-hmm. see it explode you're like no turn around <laughs> we go home now <laughs> the commissar's in town we also because when he reverse engineers this 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 super weapon we get nanobots again which man i am so fucking over nanobots being yeah. just a end all be all for a MacGuffin in a movie oh like, totally I mean they can do anything yeah I got really annoyed that we brought smart blood back oh my oh, god fuck. yes I wrote that down too the smart blood is the dumbest shit <laughs> gotta get it out of here I think the actual <laughs> official name is eye blood there you go, there you go. When, when he leaves with the scientists and he tells Paloma like oh it's good working with you see you again and then I, I, I guess I wrote this down. I don't really have an opinion one way or another about it, but like this this Craig era Bond yeah. becomes more monogamous throughout the movies. Uh-huh. Does that change your view of this, like the legacy of this character, or do you think it's a necessary change? No, I, I think it. I think it's great. I think it also. I mean, this is legitimately the first post Me Too Bond movie, right. so I think that's a really smart move. Right. It's also the arc that this character is on really demands it, right? So, so it works because this is a serialized thing. A I lot. Think 
like, so. I okay. mean, it's, it, you know, one of my big problems with, uh, on, as much as I love it, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, Bond meets this woman, gets engaged to her, and then goes and fucks like eight other women yep. on <laughs> at Blofeld's lair. Yeah. Like Judy Dench, when she says to Brosnan in the beginning of GoldenEye, like, you're a dinosaur, you're misogynist, like all of that. You're a leftover from the Cold War. Yeah. I like all of that. Yes. And I don't need him to be fucking a bunch of women in these movies. Right. But like, that's kind of the foundation of the character, right? He's right. a damaged playboy. Exactly. Like... I, 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 that's what I'm saying. I hope when they do this new, when they do something kind of experimental, but yeah. I really do want him to still keep that in. If you want to serialize it, that's fine and do like you did with Craig, but I would like to see him going back to Bond girls, you know? That's one of the strongest things with Quantum. He he sleeps with Strawberry Fields yeah. and it's just sort of like a hookup, yeah. but he never, there's never even an, a, a, an inclination that there might be something between him and the actual lead of the movie. I like that. Yeah, and I love that too. And I think here, yeah, the, if, if you're really trying to sell Tell me retroactively on the idea that Madeline is his one true great love, then yes, we can't have him hooking up with multiple women in this movie. That's totally fair. I'm just wondering, I was thinking about the future, and totally. I'm like, are they going to keep him monogamous in the future? Because I know they, like you said, this is supposed to be too... It'd be interesting, right? Yeah. If the, if the reboot is like, let's bring back Sylvia Trench well, and have her be his girlfriend. Well, I would like, I think it'd be interesting to have him not be monogamous and then play with that in a post-Me Too world. Like, well, how does that work? How does that make him feel? Yeah. How does that make people feel about him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I want to see. No, there, I think there are ways you can handle it that are interesting and, and move the character into the modern era. Right. Uh, I, I was reading some really great stuff about how Phoebe Waller-Bridge wanted to like approach having this character be like an old dog who is trying to uh, be a better man or has lost his way. Learn a new trick. Yeah. <laughs> an old dog. Le- that is actually, yes. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, what he's, that's what he's doing. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> so he, he gets the scientist. He, mm-hmm. he, him and uh, Lashana Lynch have a back and forth where they're <laughs> fucking keep stealing the scientists from one another. Uh-huh. I guess we forgot we got forgot to mention that James is basically working with the CIA because right. he doesn't work for MI6 anymore. And it like hurts M's feelings. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he's like, man, well, I thought we had a thing going. Yeah. What the fuck, bro? I thought you were dead, but no, you're working for the fucking Americans. Uh-huh. <laughs> so he takes, the Bond takes the scientists to Felix on this shrimping boat for whatever wait, reason. Wait, wait, hang on. You're just gonna, you're gonna gloss over Paloma crashing the car to knock down the science? True, true. Stunt. true. true. That's That's that funny as shit. She could have easily killed that guy. I don't know why that, she thought that was a good idea. <laughs> well, and then it cuts to her just fucking cackling. Yeah. Uh-huh. Paloma's got a little bit of a sociopath. <laughs> and Nomi is like full on Batman for this sequence. She's yep. like coming through the skylight. Yep. She shoots like a grappling hook that Bond then like shoots out of the wall. It's This is all great stuff. She shoots the Transformer and then disappears like Batman. That's right. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. So he they, he takes him to Felix, and then that's where Logan Ash is revealed to be a traitor. Shoots uh-huh. Felix. Felix, no. Locks James down in the boat and tries to blow up the boat. Oh, he doesn't try to blow up the boat. True. He, he blows up the boat. True, true, true. It starts to sink. Yeah. He says as he's trying to talk Felix like out of like you know stay with me on this. He says Paloma gave me a cigar for you to smoke, and you were gonna smoke it. You were like, gonna smoke it. I was like Jesus Christ, big tobacco really paid Bond off in this fucking. <laughs> the man's dying, Bond. Come on. My favorite dialogue exchange changes in this scene though uh-huh. it's like when i was a kid on that trip boat you're from milwaukee <laughs> i am thought i made that up that was I so love funny that. he's delirious he can't remember what's true and what's cover and it's a good it's a really good exchange and i so good man this moment where he says james it's a good life oh, isn't it oh Poof. a lot of sexual tension yeah just kiss <laughs> just kiss right here but it breaks my heart man <laughs> no it, it, i got me good too i choked up a little bit here because man felix Slider, i unfortunately gets very little to do in these movies Mm-hmm. but the little bit he's in he is such a welcome breath like god damn and Qu- and quantum and casino oh god how much better is it that you know as josh and i have been going through all the classic movies and they recast felix in every single fucking one yeah the fact that we have a through line with jeffrey wright like makes this hit so much harder yeah. so good man and that's like Bond's only friend, yeah, right. Like, because he, I mean, I don't think you would call Q or Money Penny or them like his friends. Felix was like a legit friend to him, yes. and now he's gone. Yeah, and then just the shot of him in this little dinghy with the cigar, Ugh, yeah, and the the ship, the big uh, cruise ship coming in. It's great. In such a smart way to play off of like visual cues that we know from classic Bond movies, right? Like, mm-hmm. how many of those movies end with like a triumphant moment of yep. him in one of these lifeboats, like smiling? He's <laughs> yeah. got the girl, yeah. and this one he. He's just lost. Yeah. It feels like with Felix sinking into the water a uh, lot like Vesper. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 
And uh, he goes to his garage in England. And he gets the volant from the living daylights out of storage. He's also, I don't know if you noticed, but in that in that garage, he's got, he's got the, the porcelain little... bulldog yeah. that Judy Dench had. Oh, I missed that. Oh, I love that. That's great. Yeah. From Skyfall. Yeah. It's like, it's what the shot opens on. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's in like a little box. Yeah. It's, it's kind of silhouetted, so you got to look for it, but it's there. That's it's awesome. There. I just love, I mean, he, Craig apparently like- requested this car specifically like he's mm. like that's my favorite aston martin from the series really yeah and he starts uh he, he drives off as this just the fuzzy fucking surf guitar kicks in Ooh, it's so it's good, good. Hell it's so yeah. good it's good johnny marr putting in the world that's right yeah <laughs> madeline has got to get out of the therapy game mm-hmm. because she has a record now two for two where her new clients have completely <laughs> shattered her world uh-huh. because this is where Safin comes in, much like when Bond comes in and the inspector. You're very attractive for a psychotherapist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shows her the mask, says, I need your help, only you can do this. Oh, hang on. Are we are we glossing over the reintroduction of fucking Q? Oh, oh sure. Is that yes, before this? Yeah, so yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I have the note that says, of course, Q is a fucking cat person. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And hairless cats. <laughs> uh-huh. That makes total sense for Ben Wishaw's Q. Creepy. You know, they come with fur these days <laughs> really nice apartment yes a lot of natural light i love it are they saying q is gay too because i think it was implied that he was having i think i think that's the implication yeah, yeah. okay I, I thought that was interesting because the, the, he's got the wine he's got the hairless cats it was it was real nice a nice little cozy apartment he's waiting on his date to arrive yeah. he's like he's almost here could you imagine bond walking in right when you think your date is oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and i also i love the the confrontation between m and bond oh, where m so good is genuinely sad that felix is has died yeah but he he sort of gives us bond's thesis statement for this movie mm-hmm. or at least the first half of it if you've nothing left to give you are irrelevant yep. damn yep. which is like a punch in the gut oh and and before this too i got another note here where i wrote down ah rory kinnear because <laughs> he shows back up right here <laughs> oh i do love so rory kinnear says for half a second i forgot his character's name was tanner mm-hmm. and when he says bond you're looking well and bond just goes tanner and i thought he was saying like i, yeah, got, I got a tan in jamaica <laughs> well <laughs> that and, or I got Tanner being out in that lifeboat, being waiting to get rescued. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> tanned, rested. I think that could work as both as both. Uh, you know, talking to him and yeah, yeah, I think that would be that that would be good. <laughs> but yeah, though this the plot of this film. You know, I, I know it was kept under secrets, under wraps, uh-huh. and when COVID came out, they pushed it back and pushed it back. You're like, why do they keep pushing it? Do you guys remember when we dropped COVID, right? <laughs> when COVID came out. <laughs> it is weird that like this lines up so perfectly with COVID. Of, oh like, my God. A virus that will kill you if, if you get exposed to it. It can er- affect your whole family. Yeah. Like, it's kind of... Could not believe I was watching a pandemic movie shot before the pandemic. Yeah. Like, I... Yeah. It's it's kind of nuts. It's kind of crazy. Like, everyone was like, oh, like, the Chinese did COVID. Actually, it was the British. Yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> Rami Malek had a bat. <laughs> <laughs> it takes... An hour and 20 minutes for this movie to explain what the villain's plan is. And even then, it's still not fully explained. Nope. I I don't know. It's weird because this movie is so bloated, but I can't really think of too much to cut out because I like it all. Right. (laughs) I don't know. I guess trimming some just some scenes down, maybe. That's it. Well, I I, I was was reading this thing where someone said, like, you could trim out, like, some of the chase scenes. But even then, I'm like, you like, this movie's so long. We need those, like, bits of action and popcorn excitement. Honestly, I think you could kind of, and I like where they, where it goes I think you can kind of almost cut out all the Naomi stuff really like it doesn't really t- I mean this, I just I love her though I, I like Lashana Lynch a lot and I like where this character goes mm-hmm. but this movie only almost plays like it's a prequel to her Casino Royale sure like this is her before she gets her license to kill and everything like that yeah a little bit Amazon Prime's new 007 the series oh uh, g- get the fuck out of here Jeff Bezos no thank you <laughs> I love uh, Tanner's reaction to learning about the nanobots mm-hmm. like, it's, yes. it's, literally, it's literally like the big gulps thing from Dumb and Dumb. He's like, nanobots, huh? All right. Yeah, yeah he goes, he goes, the nanobots, and Tanner goes, right. Right. Yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> I like that Tanner gets a lot to do in this movie. I do too. I, I and I love the I love the conversation with him where he yeah, like you mentioned earlier, we used to be able to get in the room with the enemy, look him in the eye. It's great. They they share a laugh when he says it's just the usual. <laughs> and then goes back to business mode. Uh M gets an F bomb in this one, which I love. Yeah. And I, I like I said, I like where Naomi's character goes, but I think this whole and it's kind of funny, mm-hmm. but like the whole thing about her being like, Whoa, he's coming back as a double O, what number is he going to be? I'm uh-huh. like, this is so pathetic, girl. Come it's on. It's a little childish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. But it, also, to your point from earlier, like this movie's dealing with, uh, I, you know, regret. We just had Felix Leiter's heartbreaking death scene. Mm-hmm. And then we also have dialogue like, Q 
Q, hack into Blofeld's bionic eye, see oh what you can God. find. <laughs> well, that gets paid off for me because when they show Q hacking it and then his computer just says, Blofeld's eye unlocked. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh my so God. Good. I, I fucking laughed so hard. Oh. It was like it was like in Wishmaster when it was like uh, laser overloaded uh-huh, or whatever. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, so are we going we gonna to talk about uh, Blofeld pulling up in the world's worst roller coaster? Man, <laughs> I saw a, a, a review that said it was like a, a slow claw machine. Well, like, He's like one of the aliens from Toy Story. So there's so much of this because it's like, I don't think you've earned the Hannibal Lecter treatment for Blofeld after one movie. No. And also, we got to retire the villain in like elaborate prison systems yes. because of Silence of the Lambs. Like, this is goofy as shit. And the fact that Bond's able to reach in and choke him mm-hmm. shows that this was all for nothing. Like, this right. is pointless. I do. Oh, man. I, I do love the strangling moment and him yelling, you know, die, Blofeld, Dude. die, which is like a direct quote from You Only Live Twice. Yeah, And, and yep. it's like Casino Royale where, like, Bond was like a, a mad dog off a leash yeah. of, like, or Quantum of Solace. And it's like the fact that he's he kills two main villains in this movie. Yes. This went unintentionally, but it's like he was ready to go for it. Dude, this is fucking over this shit. <laughs> yeah, and I it's funny, the other thing that doesn't feel earned is now everyone just calls him Blofeld after we had a whole movie of him yeah. being called Oberman yeah. and it being like a reveal that he's Blofeld. Yeah. And I don't know, it's just, uh, there's some stuff that just feels like retroactive. Sure. Did the framing on the shot of Blofeld bother anyone else? <sighs> like the straight on shot of him? The straight on shot of him and then when they show him dead and he's just kind of just slumped over. Uh, no, during the whole <laughs> scene because the bar oh, uh, yes. on his cell cuts right across yes. and gives him little T-Rex arms. <laughs> yes, it does. You're right. It's You're right. fucking hilarious. It was bothering me the whole fucking scene. Looks like Barry Kogan in that deleted Batman scene. <laughs> oh my God. Like literally, like it cut him off right at the elbow. I yeah. totally missed that. That's so funny. No, he's right. He's totally right. Oh, DC, if you can pull it up, fucking please. <laughs> it's the funniest shit I've ever seen. Uh-huh. While I look for that, I wanted to talk about real quick. I love how uncomfortable it is and how heartbreaking it is when Matt, like he tries to shake Madeline's hand because yeah. Madeline is Blofeld's therapist. He's trying to be business as usual, yep. right? And she's like, what the fuck is the matter with you? Like, yeah. I loved it. I loved it so much. Well, wait, are you talking about when Bond tries to shake her hand? Yes, when right before they go in. Yeah. Well, that's good. She, she can't touch anyone. She doesn't want to give him this poison. Well, I know, but for, for him. But it, but it works on both levels. Yes. Oh, okay. Got it. For him, he doesn't know that. Okay. I thought you were saying she didn't do it out of disrespect. Uh-huh. But then the, the little sneak, like Blink and you miss it, he, he grabs her arm yeah. yeah and it's so fucking like sad that that's that she inevitably puts into play the thing that is going to undo him at the end yes. yeah like it's it's that's the that's the parts of the script that i just fucking love yeah, like absolutely. how smooth they are with that shit i love that blofeld's you know insides bubble out of his face <laughs> and then five <laughs> minutes later tanner comes in and says he's dead and bond looks at him like no shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> he, he looks like uh when the wishmaster said that guy had cancer right, <laughs> that's right. The, the pharmacist that's he has right. the same effect there's something in your city <laughs> But yeah, it's it's a huge character leap for Bond to like say fuck it, I'm going to kill the villain. Like he does, it's, yeah, it's all it's heavy. Because then Tanner comes in and tries to break it up, and he's like, I, I've, I've interrogated people before. That's yeah. not, I was totally not going to kill him. He was gonna, totally going to kill him. He was a hundred percent going to kill him. One hundred percent. All right, almost there, fellas. Uh, okay, here me. we go. Yeah, because it takes like eight minutes for this fucking dude. This is where you could cut out some time. Yeah. The, the the slow carousel ride. It takes Blofeld longer to get from the back of the room to the front uh-huh. than it does for the fucking missiles. Look, right there. That's really <laughs> funny. Holy shit. Fucking T-Rex arms. No, he's in the prison from Cabin in the Woods. Oh like, he's God. down there yeah. with the Tooth Fairy and <laughs> Hell Priest. They hit the button and let him go. Yeah, he starts the party. <laughs> so, I love that Bond immediately goes to Madeline after he realizes that he was wrong about her betraying him. And there's a nice shot that mirrors how, uh, you know, Saffin's arrival at the cabin, right? Yes. Like, as Bond walks up over the hill. Yes. Yeah. And Bond gives maybe the most emotionally like vulnerable moment that character's ever had here. Yes. Because man, like you would think he would come in with his wit and like like he normally does, but no. he is completely straight with her. Like I've loved you forever, and I'm sorry I did this to you. And for what felt like five minutes of my life, oh. I wanted everything with you. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> and it's so fucking well acted that you forget that I had no attachment to this relationship in the previous movie. Right. Like I believe it. I believe it one thousand percent. And that moment is. 
so heartbreaking. Uh, and then yeah. the way they cut the tension with the Slinky and Matilda, like, it's funny. It's great. Slinky, Slinky, <laughs> everyone loves a Slinky. It's funny, but also immediately you're like, holy shit, Bond's got a daughter. Yes. Right? Yes. And then I love that Madeline comes in and immediately says, she's, she's not, not yours. yours. Like, obviously it's his, but, yeah. but I like that. Bullshit. They try to hold on to that for as long as possible. And he, sa- he even says, he's like, she's like, she, her eyes. Yeah. Like, she says, I have something to show you. And he goes, another child. Uh-huh. <laughs> the reveal of Matilda in the theater crushed the shit out of me. because I Yeah. I immediately knew, oh my God, he's got a fucking daughter. Right. Like, it's not, it's not really a reveal. Mm-hmm. And I don't think the movie intends it to be, right? It's yeah. just meant to be another emotional gut punch for for you, right? Well, that and somehow they managed to cast the most adorable fucking child oh I've gosh. ever seen. Absolutely. This is the cutest fucking kid. Like, like her, just her big blue eyes. Mm-hmm. And then like when he makes her pancake or crepes yes. the next morning, she's like, they're, they're all right. right. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> It's so good. This little girl is so good at this movie. Oh, I loved her. Yeah, I love all of this stuff at Madeline's home. The only stuff that doesn't work for me is when he's, again, he's asking her, he's like, what does Safin want? And she goes, revenge, me. And I'm like, yeah, okay, the movie doesn't actually know what yeah, Safin's she's plan is. His cross. I feel like that was like a filler line yeah. that the screenwriters let, put in and then forgot to replace. <laughs> they forgot to control F and find that line again. Right. Yeah. I do like, though, that Bond is now like in full daddy mode because he says, <laughs> damn it. That's the word of the movie. I know. Yep. I know. The word of the episode. I chose that word specifically. But he says, there are a thousand reasons we need to find this man. You just gave me a reason to kill him. Yes. Hard. That's so good. That's badass as shit. Hard. <laughs> yeah. Like, he just be- he just became Joel Bond. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then they get in the car, and they're gonna, they're, he's gonna take Matilda and Madeline with him. Yeah, no, because they, they know that Logan Ash is on his way to their location. That's a great moment where he, like, asks for, he asks for 007's location, and they, they tell him and he goes, well, I thought she was chasing Logan Ash, not me. That is a good moment. Yes, and that's a good little reveal. And then it's a, it's a really good, like, oh shit moment. What do you guys make of this line where they're in the car <laughs> and little Matilda asks Madeline, uh, I got a mosquito bite. Do mosquitoes have friends? What do you guys make of that? It's 100% the kind of thing a child asks, right? Sure, like it's, sure. So, it's just totally innocent yeah, yeah. and unaware of the situation. And I love, I, I, I think Leia Seydoux is so good. She is such a good mama in this movie. Oof. Where she's smiling she's like I, I don't know sweetie and yeah. then like looks back at him like go faster knowing that they might be about to die yeah. yes and then um, like that little girl asking that question is like come and then she goes she says do mosquitoes fr- have friends and she goes I don't know and then little girl goes I think they do and I'm uh, like man this is the most adorable little girl ever so cute <laughs> she, I mean yeah the number of times she says the the phrase doo doo in this movie also oh my god so the little doo doo her little her little <laughs> stuffed animal oh, I love it I love it so much my and they get into this this great chase scene and it's, it's so good really good because like Leia Sadu is trying to comfort Matilda and then like Bond is just trying to focus on getting them out. Yeah. And when they pull out into the into the you know the the foggy jungle. Yeah, it's when they're in Silent Hill. Yep, yep. And Bond is running with Matilda. He comes across the motorcycle guy, and then Leia Sadu goes full mama bear. Yes. Fucking dude. Dead drops that motherfucker. <laughs> Shoots him like four times in the face. <laughs> in the face. I think that's where you could have put an F bomb too, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and so he tells him to stay there, and then he goes out and does this MacGyver shit with the rope and everything. Oh, the, the tripwire trap is so good it's good and then catches logan ash and then right before he crushes him with a fucking suv (laughs) he does a reverse for your eyes only kill like it's so great (laughs) gives him the full oh Oh, my god oh no oh mally oh i can't co-sign on that joke (laughs) you know what i'm gonna leave it i'm just gonna bleep it like i I can't i can't oh i felt terrible writing that down Uh, (laughs) that's it's 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 a dark joke i'll give it to you but man i don't want anyone else to hear (laughs) oh it's too dark that was just for you guys that was just for you guys (laughs) okay okay thank you (laughs) But then he says, I had a brother. His name was Felix Leiter. Yes. Boy, that got a round of applause in the theater. It's yeah. a great line. Crushing it with an SUV. <laughs> it, it also reminded me of Spider-Man. Oh, like, yeah. I had, I had a father. His name was Ben Parker. Yeah. 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 I, wanted, I wanted Billy Magnuson to just say, Godspeed, James Bond. Godspeed, <laughs> Bond. <laughs> that would have been fucking fantastic. Oh, uh, man. But yeah, no, this this is the best kill in the movie it's for me. Like, I know this isn't a slasher. We're not doing best kill, but it's it's 
so good. The, the fuck we aren't. Someone died. We do best kill. <laughs> oh, he he rolls that car on top of that guy. I'm saying. I'm telling you, it's a reverse for your eyes only. It's so good. Sure, sure. I I actually think it's creepy when Saffin steps in to the the bunker and takes Matilda. It's a great shot. And then when when Bond is is picked up by uh, 007 and he says thank you 007, I was like, That's man, nice. I love that this movie just completely does away with Bond's hubris and ego. Yes. Yeah, but what are those fucking sunglasses she's wearing? I do not know. <laughs> what the fuck? Good question. <laughs> They're like Bebop sunglasses from Ninja Turtles. It sure does. <laughs> it's sure it's does. weird. And I and I I love that moment. And then it, it has its legs cut out from under it by the following scene where she decides he should be redesignated as 007 for this mission. Yeah. I wish she didn't do that yeah. because it, it kind of uh, invalidates that whole arc. If anything, it should have been at the very end when they're having the, the glass to celebrate Bond. Oh, yeah. Retire the number. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. nice. I like that. That would have been so much better. Yeah. So much better. And so we go to the the island mm-hmm. uh, that Safin owns, and I like this island a lot. I like the poison garden idea. I like that he's like, I have flowers that can do all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. That the Squid Games River that they got down below, like <laughs> and the the giant Zen garden. Mm-hmm. I I love this. Well, I mean, hugely Ken Adams inspired production design, right? Oh like yeah. You've got you've got bits of Doctor No's lair. Mm-hmm. You got bits of the volcano lair from You Only Live Twice. Oh, I, I listened before we I, I, after I watched the movie. I listened to the official No Time to Die podcast uh-huh. where they interviewed Barbara Broccoli mm-hmm. and Purvis and Wade. Did you say podcast? Did I say podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's genius if that's what it's called. <laughs> if, if it is, it was accidental. Uh, Barbara Broccoli mentioned we wanted to bring back the Poison Garden more than anything. Yeah. And I'm glad they got that in there. Right. And this conversation with Safin and, and Madeline and, you know, the fact that he, she she says how damaged you must be to threaten a child. Right. Like... I don't I I don't know I love Safin in this movie. I really just wish I understood his plan better and he had more to do. Yeah. Cuz I think he could be an all-time great. Yeah. I that might I I will say I liked him a lot more on this watch, but he's still He's still not totally doing it for me. I don't, I, th- I think he's giving 110% in this performance. I just, like I said, I just think that the script doesn't serve him well. He's giving Dr. No. <laughs> he's giving me <laughs> Emilio Largo. It's giving Dr. No. It's, it's yeah. giving Dr. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I noticed this too. When, whenever he decides to keep Matilda and has the henchman drag Madeline away, also great performance from Lance to do of like the fear of having your child taken from you was great. Uh-huh. But I just wrote down. I was like, what? What a weird life. The life of a henchman must be. Uh huh. Right. He's going from from master to master. Even like they even acknowledge that they're like this guy killed your last boss. Right. You think you're safe? There's that, and there's also like there has to be so much conversation. I mean, this is not a new idea. This mm-hmm. happens in all movies that have henchmen, but like I mean, it's just freelance work you know right. it is what it is well i mean doing their taxes probably fucking sucks <laughs> that's true i'm gonna make money but he's gonna kill everyone on earth well it's like well hang on i, I got it i got my w-2 from blofeld but fucking <laughs> Safin. i mean that motherfucker died before he did his paperwork <laughs> oh man fuck they're not gonna get my w-2 for my old job before my new one kicks in fuck yep. <laughs> wait do i 1099 my assault rifle i think so i think you got a 1099 that thing but my, my point is, like, they have to have a whole conversation before this happens, because yeah. he doesn't say anything, and they just know by his body language that they, they need to now take Madeline away, and, like, you're pointing a gun at a mom and her daughter. Like, it's just got to be a weird life. Yeah. Like, hey, man, we do this, and we get some money, and then we're done? Right. Like, I don't know. It's 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 like the mafia. Like, you're not just going to be able to leave. Like, <laughs> what are you doing this for? I don't know. I just thought it was weird. No, you're right. I mean, there and and Safin seems to rule this whole compound by nonverbal cues, right? Yes. Like when when he lets Matilda go for no reason. Yeah. He just sort of does like a little hand gesture and everyone's like, "Okay, I guess we know not to shoot this child." Yes. That and like when he go when Bond and him meet and Bond pulls his gun out, uh-huh. he doesn't do any Anything, the floor just lowers. Like oh, he doesn't yeah, press that's a button. Right. Yes, like <laughs> it's very strange. I love this whole storming the lair sequence. Yeah. I love the glider slash submersible. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Q as the man in the chair. Yeah, I do think it's weird that like Safin has adopted this broken mask as like a thing. Yeah, like it appears on screens when he talks. Yeah, no, it's great. <laughs> I'm also confused by the acid pool that doesn't kill you if you wear a jumpsuit, but will kill you if you're wearing body armor. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> 
But I do like the visual of that. Like everyone in the pink hazmat suits oh, yeah. and the, the, the poison river. I thought that was great. I love the visual of them all seeing the guy boiling and be like, fuck. They're like, oh, is <laughs> that what we do? <laughs> we, that's what we've been <laughs> standing in. It is a good reaction. <laughs> and then Safin, when he meets with Bond uh-huh. and he just starts spouting off uh, the names of other movies because he says, a history of violence, license to kill, <laughs> Wishmaster. Like it is very strange that he does that. The Bourne identity. <laughs> But uh, no, this this meeting of the two minds is great because Bond realizes that he's in a vulnerable state. Mm-hmm. I love the, you know, history has not kind to men that play God. Yes. Like, I don't know. I, I like this exchange a lot. I just wish there was more levity to it because I wish Safin had more to do. I wish it was less of a, we are not so different, you and I. Yeah. Kind yeah. of speech. But I do, I do love, you know, life is all about leaving something behind yeah. and like kind of threatening his legacy. Yes. And I also like the implication that Safin is like sprucing up the place mm-hmm. to live there after the end of the world. Like mm-hmm. we see them hanging new paintings. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's some really interesting unspoken stuff in this last scene. Yeah, it's great. And then uh, the the worst line of the movie, maybe of this entire, fr- well, maybe not the entire franchise, but no. it's up there. Christmas comes once a year. Well, I love that line. I, I know you do. <laughs> but when <laughs> when when the the Russian scientist tells the only, well, not the only black woman, but the only black woman in this facility, oh god, that he can extract. Like this is so weird that this comes. I could wipe out your whole race if I wanted to, yep. or something like that. But this comes out of nowhere. nowhere. This character is not shown to be racist at all. No. And if you want to do that, set it up earlier. Yes. Set up that this guy's racist earlier. But yeah, like that he's like some kind of eugenics nut. Just it, it was so extra. And I'm like, man, this could have been you could have did a rewrite on this. Like, I know he's a bad guy. But it feels good seeing her kick him into the acid. She does, and then saying the reverse title of the movie. It's time to die. Uh, yeah, I fucking hate that line. Too. I didn't like it. I don't I think she should have just kicked him in, no words at all. And yeah. if you're gonna do the time to die, do it after you've already kicked him in. Right. That's that, that's how I feel about it. I do love when Bond meets back up with uh with nomi he's got matilda he's got madeline in tow and he says uh yeah me he basically introduces all of them and he says they're my and he like mouths something mm-hmm. like he can't even figure out how to put into words what what they are to him yep and then uh he says he sends them on the boat and says i'll just be a minute uh, <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> and, the, and the, we get the no time to die strings oh. as he kisses her goodbye <laughs> Man, I felt like this the same way I felt about Hank and Breaking Bad when he was like, honey, I got him. I'll be home soon. I'm uh, like, oh, uh, uh. <laughs> Okay, so then then this movie becomes John Wick for a little bit, oh, which yeah. is pretty great. Oh, these goons have like Stormtrooper level accuracy. Dude, the, 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 <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. The, the, the grenade bit yes. here is so funny where the one falls down, he throws it back up, and then a bundle comes down. <laughs> this guy is impervious to explosions, I'm yeah. telling you. This fake one on the staircase, though, is so fucking good. Yeah. It, it, like I said, it becomes John Wick for a little bit. It's John Wick. <laughs> it's the it's the final scene from Cowboy Bebop. Like, uh-huh. it, is, it is so rad. I love it. This man just walks off a flashbang. <laughs> he does. <laughs> yeah, and then, guys, does. I've played Call of Duty. It's hard. <laughs> there is one <laughs> goon that is point blank range damn near and misses him with a pistol like three times. Yes. Like you're right. Like none of these guys have aim. The foley in this scene is so crunchy. Uh-huh. Like he there's a he he lands a headshot on one dude that's in the foreground and it's like gooey. Yes. Like it's a, it's so good. It's like, really good. He's stealing one gun after another, uh-huh. using them as shields. Yeah. Like it's fantastic. How do you guys feel about the the one liner after Primo's death? Love it. Really? Love it. Uh, I love it's it, it's a hat on a hat because he he uses his little uh, EMP watch to make this the bionic eye burst in his head i like that but I again just, bond is allowed bond something i haven't mentioned a whole lot this season is a little bit of a scam he is a scam a hundred percent he's a scam he tells q <laughs> i just showed someone your watch it really blew their mind and then we get a guitar strum yeah. like almost it, it might as well be a rim shot it's so good i'm pretty sure they, <laughs> no time to scam i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure they cut the Q right then he goes oh okay oh, oh. or something like that He's, yeah he cuts to q and he goes very good uh yeah. bond you i'm gonna go up to the blast doors and <laughs> yeah, it's really good <laughs> which how does the emp not affect his fucking earpiece yeah, that's a great that's question a, that's a, a continuity error yes. you gotta just get yeah you just gotta get over that Copy. i mean it's it's one of those things where q is like uh it's very short range i haven't tested it yeah. so it's like oh okay it as long as you put it right next to this motherfucker's head it's gonna work yeah <laughs> yeah okay this is where he opens the blast doors yes. yep. the blast doors start to close again he runs out towards the poison garden and Fuck 
pop, 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 pop. This scene is incredible. This is uh, this is Safin's best moment in the movie for me. Yes. Like, I think he's I think Malik is genuinely great here. Yes. You've never really seen Bond like this before. He gets shot like a dog in the street. Yes. Like it's he falls in the water, he gets shot yeah. again. Like Safin walks up and shoots him again and it's kind of a hand of your mouth moment yeah. because it's like I've never seen Bond like this. And the, then the closest I can think of is when he's on the run in Honor Majesty's Secret Service, right? Yeah. Like he's going through that little Christmas town yeah. and he's cornered at every turn. Yeah. And then Bond breaking his arm. Oh, Oof. that's great. That might be the most brutal we've ever we've seen this Bond. Yeah. yeah. Like just shattering his fucking arm. In the Craig era, I would say it's this. And maybe the closest thing to that is the Quantum of Solace silent fight oh, in, the, yeah. in the condo. Oh, yeah. yeah. True. That's good. But yeah, like we talked about it before, but the way that this, the villain of this movie Oof. gets the upper hand here, it's like when he's telling him, we have both become poison to the ones we love. Mm -hmm. One stroke of the cheek, one kiss yeah. will kill Matilde, will kill Madeline. Yeah. Like it is, I, my stomach <sighs> dropped. Yeah. Like I was like, what the? F like, and even then in my, when I'm watching this in the theater, I'm thinking, well, he's gonna he's gonna have to go back to his island or whatever. Yeah. Like I, I still am like, I can't accept what is about to happen. And the way that again, I think the brilliance of this character yeah. of Safin and the brilliance of this script is A, he does not have a vendetta against Bond directly. This no. is just a backup plan, a trump card. Right. And he's able to do what no other villain in this run of Bond movies has done, which is weaponize the one thing that this Bond wants, which is to settle down and and have a family. Yeah. And be happy. And be happy. Yeah. And he weaponizes that. And yeah. that is- Unforgivable. It's the most unforgivable thing. It's unforgivable. Yeah. It's cruel. It's genius. Yeah. And the way that Bond remedies the situation is to not even look as he puts bullets in this guy's head. Yeah. Like- Empties his gun into him. It is the darkest part of any Bond movie. That yeah. I can, it's darker than the end of uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service for me. Yeah. Like, yeah. My, my stomach dropped just you describing this scene. The villain <laughs> won. Yes. He's like the first- Real villain in a Bond movie to actually win. Yeah. And it's cr it's crazy. I, and like I said, like you, like, well, like you said, Nathan, Malik gives a performance here yeah. that is so fucking good. Yeah. He's super pale. Like all the blood has left his face after he's had his arm broken. Mm -hmm. And you can just see like he's sick. He's like trying to talk through the pain. And he's still just, he knows that he's not getting out of here either. Right. But we, I guess we never really talked about it. The whole backstory to Safin is his whole family was killed by Spectre. Uh -huh. yeah. His mom died in front of him. So that's why he wants to, to off off every member of Spectre. And then like to know that like he is poisoned because he can't get close to anybody anyway because of his condition. That's never really fully explained. Right. I think this it's just like a side effect of whatever the fucking poison was. Yeah. Right? Whatever nerve agent or whatever. But like this would make sense to a T if Blofeld did this to Bond. Uh -huh. But the fact that it's just a guy that's just the next villain, that's what makes it so devastating to me. Well, and it's that it's the cycle of violence continuing, right? Yeah. Like yep. Blofeld has continually created new problems and new awful things that are ruining James's life. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, do you want to start the recap here, Nathan? Or do you want me to keep going a little bit? Oof. Um, yes. I mean, uh, my my notes stop pretty much here because I'm just in it, mm. like fully enraptured by the the ending of this movie. I, I've got three more, and two of them are dialogue. Okay. Yeah. Go go for it. So Bond reopens the blast doors, pouring out blood, climbs to the roof. There are missiles on the way to destroy yes. the island and and get rid of the biological weapon. Yeah. So the whole point is because they were doing uh, activity on this island other surrounding nations like russia and england and japan were sending mil uh, cruise ships there they're wondering why england is attacking a disputed bit of land yes. which doesn't really tie back in at all well it's a disputed piece of land it looks it was used during the uh, the world war ii i think they say yeah and you know there's been russia and japan disputing over who owns the, the island they seen there was activity there so they go there uh-huh and they have to blow up the island otherwise this poison will get out into the world and kill millions if not billions yes and Bond finds Matilda's little uh, stuffed animal, her doo doo, mm -hmm. and it, we forgot to mention. But when he's having this whole conversation with Safin and finding out, he's got the doo doo on him, yeah, which is not a phrase that would make sense out of context. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but again, uh, Joe, it's a, a clearly a Joe Dirt reference uh -huh. to when he said, "I got the poo on me." I got the doo doo on me. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> he climbs up to the top of this 
building. I'm acting like I didn't cry at this movie uh-huh. two hours ago. <laughs> and he, you know, he's, he's, the rockets are coming. They can't stop him. He can't get off the island. Yeah. And he's talking with Madeline over the radio <sighs> and says, you know, she's, she's realizing the, the severity of the situation. Oh my God, you've been poisoned. Yeah. Just get off the island. We'll figure something out. And he says, you have made the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Ugh. She's perfect because she came, came from, from you. you. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Whoa, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I'm ugly crying in the theater. Yep. And yeah, Nathan, I'll, I'll turn it over to you for the, the wrap up here. What happens here at the end of the movie? Um, as Bond watches these cluster missiles coming towards him, Madeline says, she has your eyes. Oh. And he says, I know. And the missiles touch down and we literally watch James Bond blown apart. Mm-hmm. Like, like the, the, like I, even up till that shot, I was like, okay, well, they're going to pull, they're going to pull a Dark Knight Rises mm-hmm. and we're going to see him on Jamaica, like watching them from afar or something like that. Mm-hmm. But then no, a fucking missile lands on his head. Yeah. And that is, it is uh, a not up for debate. Apart from gore hitting the camera, this dude is <laughs> done and there's no, there's no, like an arm hits the camera. Uh-huh. No, like. There is no debate. This dude is dead. He's I don't care about anyone. Any, I don't care about your fan theory. I won't even read it. He's fucking dead. He's dead. Cut to MI6, uh, the, the, the regular crew remembering Bond having a drink in his honor and leaving one glass of brandy for him. And right back to work. Everyone's going, you know, back to saving the day. Mm-hmm. We cut to Madeline driving with Matilda and telling her, I want to tell you a story about a man named Bond, James Bond. Oof. Roll credits with, we have all the time in the world. But like... She met him. She she did, but she doesn't know the full context. I'm sure the next sentence is going to be, he's, he's your, your dad. father. Um, yeah. That's a fucking great song choice. Great Oof. song choice. Oh, my God. And the, the iris closing as they go through the tunnel. Really lovely. Yeah. So, my last two notes here is one last thing he says to her when... Uh, he's talking to Madeline before the the missiles come. Is at the beginning of the movie we talked about it, but when they're doing the uh, all the time in the world motif, <sighs> and she asks him to go faster while they're driving on their honeymoon, and he says, "We don't have to go faster. We have all the time in the world." Yeah. And then here, the last little message he says to her, he the the change up of it. He says, "You have all the time in the world." That's right. And I'm yes. like, somehow I'm sitting in the theater, but I still collapsed to my knees. Yep. I'm like, God. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It, it obliterated me. Mm-hmm. I believe she's also driving down the same road they drove together. At exactly. the beginning of the movie. And my last note of this movie and of this franchise mm-hmm. uh, in terms of the Craig era is say what you will about this era of films, even the weaker ones, mm-hmm. and of Daniel Craig's attitude towards them over the years, because mm-hmm. he's not always been super optimistic and super positive. He literally said after Spectre, I would rather slash my wrists than play James Bond again. Yes. And say what you will about all of that. Mm-hmm. But this movie had the fucking courage for the first time to not only kill James Bond, but to kill him in front of which is essentially the love of his life and his fucking daughter. Yeah. Like that is heavy. Yeah. It's ballsy. I'm so glad they didn't Dark Knight Rises this. I'm so glad they didn't have him walk off into the sunset because this is the natural end of this character. It's the perfect ending for this bond. Yes. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I I don't think we'll get another run, even though these movies are so disconnected at times. I don't think we'll get another run like this. No. In my lifetime, at least. I don't think so. And it's weird because while Brosnan was my bond, Mm. because he was my first growing up, Mm -hmm. I resonate with this one so much more because I was 16 when this first movie came out and I've stuck with him up until now when I was 31. Yeah. So I grew up with this bond and watched him go from a, you know, a smug faced, you know, naive prick basically to this family man that saves his daughter and his his wife and can never can never touch them again so even if he gets off this island he can't be with them oh that's so far it's it's so hopeless and he still they still somehow make this into a heroic and perfect cap to this tenure yeah like it's 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 such an incredible say what you will about the rest of the script the fact that this ending works as well as it does Mm -hmm. makes everything else about it worth it And, and it makes the arc of like Vesper to being betrayed by Vesper yeah. to being on a rampage because of Vesper yeah. to I'm now too old for this shit. And then I finally come to grips with what happened with Vesper. I fall in love with someone, have a child with them, mm-hmm. and then 
I can never touch him again. Like that's that's a lot. Mm-hmm. That's a lot to go through. And I'm I'm glad we got it. I wouldn't change it for a world. And I think Craig navigates it all perfectly. This is without a doubt. This is his best performance. Yes, that's what I was gonna say. Like I even more so than Skyfall. I will say uh, even more than Casino Royale. Yeah. I think he's. I think yeah. I think there's so many layers to his performance here, and it's it's the best. It might be the best acted Bond movie. Full stop. I think so. I think so. And uh, maybe even besides Casino Royale, maybe the best directed. Yeah. Like, I think I think there's so many emotional beats here. Like, this is uh, this is a very vulnerable movie. Mm-hmm. And I, I really appreciate that. I'm glad Barbara Broccoli got to this stage with this character. Mm-hmm. I'm glad Purvis and Wade had a lot of growing up they did uh, between 2002 and 2006. Right. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, like I said, I think this movie is now my number two in this era. Yeah. And it, that may fluctuate even more the more I think about it. But I'm so curious if we'd be having this conversation if Danny Boyle had gotten to make his, but I, you know, I'm glad I'm glad we got this movie. Well, if the rumors are to be believed, it was a much more whimsical movie. Uh-huh. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think this is the right tone for the final Bond movie for Craig. Yeah. Like, this is the, the right tone. I really fucking liked it. I think I like this movie. I've only seen it once, but uh-huh. I think I liked it. E- like, I liked it after I finished it, then immediately hopped on this podcast. I think I like it more. Oh. I listen to you jackasses talk about it for two hours. Yay. Thank you. That's the ultimate compliment right there. There. Absolutely. Yeah. Usually I hate a movie more <laughs> after we talk about it for two fucking hours. Absolutely. Sure. Well, uh, do we want to talk about anything else before we get into our wrap-up segments? Uh, there's one shot that I, I... I mean, it's already in the trailer and everything, but I love the tunnel slash barrel shot. Oh, yeah. Uh, we didn't we talk about that, yeah. And that, that last gunfight. Oh, oh, yeah. It's like, hey, they, 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 they did, did the, the thing. thing and yeah. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, they did the thing. I loved it. It was good. It was good. I wish we could have seen like a body fall like just out of frame from that. Like sure. so you could see. <laughs> that would have been great. I appreciate the sound design of you hearing the guy fall, but yes. I would like to have seen it. All right. Well, without further ado, let's get into the first of many segments here at the end, Prop Cop. For new listeners of the show, Prop Cop is where we look at all the props in No Time to Die, mm-hmm. all the objects, the physical, tangible items, and we each cop one for ourselves, hence the name of the segment. Nathan, this is your movie. I will let you go first. What prop do you want from the movie No Time to Die? I really want the portrait of Judy Dench. Oh my God, yes. That hangs in the hallway. We get all the pre- the past M's yeah. in portrait form in that sequence, which I love. We get Bernard Lee. Uh-huh. We get uh, Judy Dench. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mally, what about you? I want Q's apartment. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a nice <laughs> it's apartment. Really nice places. Nice, nice apartment. Cozy little London flat. All that natural light. Come on. <laughs> Great feng shui. Mm-hmm. So many wellies and brawlies. <laughs> I'm sure. I want one of the vials of Heracles because I've got some people's hands I'd like to shake. Jesus. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, my first prop cup that I wrote down that I scratched it out afterwards. I wrote down I wanted young Madeline's Tamagotchi, but uh, <laughs> sure. I ultimately. I want just Rami Malek's mask, Good. the Doctor No mask, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is technically called a No mask. That's it right. is. I, I mean, even something as simple as like the plain business card with the Spectre logo on it. And I, I wrote grave, that one down too. That's yeah. great. That's, that's great. Good. And the Bionic Eye. Yeah, bionic Eye was on my list too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Give me that eye. Oh, that would go great for my Mad Eye Moody costume. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, we talked about this earlier, but bit parts mm-hmm. is a segment where we look at extras, smaller characters in the movie, and we recast them as ourselves to build up our filmography. So we already got we already got Nathan. <laughs> He's Logan Ash, <laughs> um, DC. Um, I want to be the guy in the barn during the Italian chase scene oh, that yeah. has to uh, let the sheep out because it's so funny he's just like hanging out in the pile of sheep yes like, release the sheep or I'll kill you yeah release the sheep or I'll kill you <laughs> um, I also love when Bond drives up to the hotel on the bike mm-hmm. he like just jumps off the bike and there's a bellboy there that's like shit uh-huh. like, <laughs> yeah that was great too what do you what do you want to be Mally oh uh, I want to be the dude that bumps into Ash and calls him police boy oh, oh that's yeah. good yeah yeah Nathan, what about you? If you if Logan Ash is unavailable to you, who would be your second? Um, I really love the guy who checks Bond in at MI6. He's oh, just yeah. like, I have no fucking clue who you are. Uh, that, <laughs> that's a great joke on the on the famous Bond, James, James Bond. Bond. Yeah, he's like, I've never heard of you. First name. I, I guarantee you, that's also a Phoebe Waller Bridge joke. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. gotta be. Uh, all right, gents, we're here at the end of an era, yeah. and for the last in the Craig films, we got to talk about the silver lining to. No time to die. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I'll go, I'll go ahead and go first. Go it. I wrote down that 
Naomi has now earned the 007 status. Mm. Isn't her name just Nomi? It, it is. is. Nomi. You keep saying Naomi. Do I, well, I mean. Fucking idiot. You know, Nomi, <laughs> like from Showgirls. That, oh, there, there you go. That's Damn good. It. That's a good reference. Walked right into that one. I think she, her character had a lot of growing up in this movie. Yeah. And I appreciated it. And I think at the end of the movie, she she was right there, shoulder to shoulder with Bond yes. during this adventure. And I, uh, I appreciated that. So that's what I got. Love it. Uh, Nathan, what about you? Uh, I mean, it's kind of uh, an obvious one, but Bond finally knows peace. Mm. Like, not only from the Secret Service, but he knows in his last moments, unequivocally, that he did the right thing and saved his family. Mm. And the world. Yeah. yeah. It's it's the best death he could have asked for. <laughs> I mean, it's better than dying from bullet holes in the Poison Garden, for right. sure. I'd rather a missile hit me directly, too. Apparently, they, they did briefly consider just having him killed by a random sniper in, in this movie. Nah. What? And nah. I just, I love this ending so much more it's great it's great uh mally i saved you for last because i i have a feeling it deserves to go last but go ahead what's your suffer lighting for no time to die i mean you know me i always side with the title character uh -huh. um yeah safin got his revenge okay okay the titular no time to die uh -huh. <laughs> safin time to safin he didn't he didn't have time no <laughs> to die yeah no time to die well there's your silver linings and let's say if you were like me at the end of this movie you were an emotional wreck yeah and you need a movie to uh put you in a better mood what is a movie people should double feature with no time to die uh mally i guess i'll start with you what movie did you write down uh the entire john wick franchise okay. nice all right yeah uh, Ma uh nope. nathan what about um, you <laughs> I would recommend if you like a Bond movie that's a little bit convoluted, has him acting fairly monogamous and driving around an Aston Martin Volant, uh, go ahead and watch 1987's The Living Daylight starring mm. Timothy Dalton. All right. I think that movie is a hell of a lot of fun. I can't remember which one it is because there's only two of them, but I know one of those Timothy Dalton's I do not like and the other one I do like, and I cannot remember which one's which. I have a feeling this is probably the one you don't like because it, it's the scene where he sleds down uh, in a cello case. Ah. I think that's the one. <laughs> I think that's the one. I think it's really fun, but I get it. I totally get it. I also went with a James Bond movie from the past, and I went with another movie that is uh, four words in the title that also ends with the word die. Mm. Uh, I think you go back to another reboot of this franchise. Yeah. It's more fun, more campy, and I believe we've already mentioned on the episode, but I think go back to Live and Let Die. Yeah. The only Bond movie to introduce magic. Into <laughs> yeah, voodoo yeah. and uh, characters who literally can survive being shot in the head. Yep, yep. If I can do a shameless plug, Yes. go check out VHS files because Josh and I have an episode on that in our Bond podcast. Yes. Uh, should be out by the time this episode drops. For new eyes only, if yes. you want to check them out. That's uh, Josh, past guest of the, of the show and Nathan's uh, James Bond podcast. Yeah, check that out. Super fun. All right, fellas, do we recommend No Time to Die? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Mm. I mean, it. It's a it's a bummer that it is so reliant on Spectre yeah. uh, for so many of its emotional payoffs, yeah. but it's so great. I got to say, like, past and future guest Ashley watched uh, just the opening scene of this movie with me. She's not a Bond fan by any stretch of the imagination mm -hmm. and was just like, I want to watch the rest of this movie. Mm. Like, this is so well constructed. Interesting. Yeah. So I, I, I say go for it. All right. Mally? Oh, yeah. Fuck. I really enjoyed it. I'm kind of surprised, honestly. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Me too. I was <laughs> fucking shocked. I'm so glad you finally had a reason to watch this. Yeah. So, yeah. I would say without question, yes. I think it's a great movie. I think whether you've been a part of the Craig Bond era or not, mm -hmm. I kind of think you can drop in on this one and get damn near the full story and uh, still have those emotional beats resonate. Maybe not as much, but I, th I think you can still have this tug at your heartstrings without knowing Spectre or anything like that. Yeah. I think this is by far the most emotionally driven Bond film ever. Mm -hmm. And I would say that knowing full well that on her majesty's secret service and casino royale exists sure but uh what a tremendous swan song yes. for for craig like this this kind of transcends the franchise this is kind of a new high point i agree i i love this movie yeah i had one last question for you fellas yeah please who should be the next james bond should it be an unknown i don't care I don't care. Not Matt Berry? You don't think it should <laughs> wow, be Matt Berry? No, that, that goes right in line with my experimental idea. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, I'll tell you, there's, there's one correct answer here. <laughs> there's no time to die, old cheese. <laughs> Blofeld, you old cunt. <laughs> I think there are tons of people who should not be James Bond, uh -huh. I'll say that. Sure. But I'm not championing one person or another. I know Aaron Taylor Johnson's come out and said he's met with them. I wouldn't be opposed to that. After seeing Bullet Train, I could see it. I like Bullet Train a lot. I know a lot of people don't like that movie. I fucking loved Bullet Train. It was smoking 
telekinesis on a train. That's what I want. <laughs> He's great in that movie. I don't know. Tom Holland, sit down. You were no. not ready. Uh, no, thank you. Honestly, hear me out. Brian Tyree Henry. You know what? I'm not opposed to it. <laughs> I'm not opposed to it. Oh, you do that and you make Aaron Taylor Johnson Felix Leiter. I oh, love it. Right? Matt Berry. M. Oh, oh, now listen here, old chap. <laughs> Got a new mission for you. Now I guess now we know what C stands for. <laughs> uh, love it. Love it. Blofeld, you must be the most ruthless bastard <laughs> in the UK. I can see this happening. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. SNL needs to do this if nothing else. Uh-huh. Let Matt Berry host and then that's your, that's your, that's one of your skits right there. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Well, uh, listener, if you've got feedback for No Time to Die or the show in general, you can do that by emailing us at uh, the Silverlines playlist at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. You can also DM us on Twitter or Instagram. I try to get back to everybody that messages us over there. Um, if you haven't already, follow us on those two platforms as well as on TikTok to watch clips from the show. Mm-hmm. If you haven't already, subscribe. Please, please leave a rating uh, and uh, you know tell your friends and family about the show. That's how we grow our numbers. We really appreciate that. And uh, if you haven't already, you can subscribe to our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist now with that out of the way (laughs) i think if i'm doing the math right we only have three more episodes of the season i believe wow i thought you were going to say 40 more minutes of this episode left because we got to match the (laughs) runtime of the fucking movie that's right we're trying (laughs) fellas i know neither of you have watched next week's movie in a long time Uh uh-huh and my clue is not going to make sense but i just rewatched it for the sole reason that i wanted a clue that would be a good clue for it for this episode so here we go Clue for what we're talking about next week, which is, I didn't realize Burger King franchise owners had this kind of money, which <laughs> will make sense next week. Huh. Yeah. I know, Mally, I, I would put my life savings on the fact that you have no clue what the fuck we're talking about next week. I thought you were going to say you were a big fan of next week's oh, movie. That's oh, no, that's, th- that's, that's the, four. That's the th- oh, Okay, that's a later installment. Never yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. See? Wow. See, I had to rewatch it too to know exactly what happens in this movie. Okay. But we're bringing back maybe our most... Like the guest that's been on the show the most next week as well. I think Ashley's going to be joining us next week. She is, and I think actually now we have to make her a co-host because like, yeah, I think she gets absorbed. <laughs> Fuck! Now I know what we're doing next week. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, any last things before we get out of the uh, get out of here for the week, fellas? No. All right. Are y'all going to be mad if I just don't show up next week? <laughs> just fully, just fully ghost all of you. You're going to miss Dorito time to die. <laughs> oh yeah, and I was going to say it kind of would fit in perfectly if you're not here next week because uh, there's a unforeseen presence in that next week's movie as well <laughs> you could say that too yeah yeah and that too t-w-o mm-hmm. and with that uh fellas no time to die is in the bag mm-hmm. rest in peace oatmeal and i guess and james, james bond, bond who will not return uh-huh. even though the end of the movie will tell you he will uh, as a zombie maybe i don't know james bond will return in 007 quantum mania <laughs> <laughs> and uh as always i've lost my little doo-doo <laughs> <laughs> magnet <laughs> Excelsior! 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 up another fantastic episode of the Silver Linings Playlist. If you would be so kind, we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did, plus a like and subscribe. We'll be back next week with another great episode. See ya!